They've been preparing the grounds for weeks. Testing, tuning, erecting the carnival. It's mid-June in northwestern France, and that can only mean one thing. Welcome to round seven of the 1966 World Sports Car Championship at the legendary Circuit de la Sarthe for the greatest race of them all, the 24 hours of Le Mans. This is the final points paying round of the 1966 sports car season for group six cars, and it's part 23 of my 1966 series where I take on the role of Richie Axelson, our intrepid racing driver, and race my way through a full season as they did back then, driving anything and everything, and everywhere possible. Last we were with the sports cars was for the formidable Targa Florio in northern Sicily. Driving for the Ford France team, we were able to secure a top five finish, but it was Ferrari with Nino Vaccarella at the wheel who came out on top. Since Sicily, Richie has focused on the start of the Formula One World Championship season with a pair of races in Monaco and Spa to open the campaign. Promises in Monaco gave way to horror in Frankerchamp, with a massive accident in the late stages with Jochen Rent, ending the race battered and bruised and lucky to be alive. But banged up and after only a few days of rest, Richie and the rest of the racing world have descended upon France for the yearly test of man and machine, endurance and attrition, twice around the clock for 24 hours on the mechanically demanding, narrow and blindingly fast highways of the French countryside. This is THE Le Mans, the one you read about in history books, the one brought to the big screen in Hollywood, the one which established Le Mans as the legendary race it is. 1966 was the year two of the most prolific racing organizations in history clashed in what became known as Ford vs. Ferrari. But this wasn't the first year they met. Ford made their first attempt to unseat Ferrari as Le Mans champions in 1964 with an all-new design dubbed the Ford GT40. Low, sleek, and competitive, the team had high hopes but ultimately succumbed to gearbox issues after 14 hours, allowing Ferrari to easily take the win, sweeping the top three spots. But Ford was back for 1965, this time entering six of their GT40s. Although seemingly prepared as ever, it was quite an embarrassing show. All dropped out of the race within the first seven hours. The cars tuned to push their smaller engines to the max to keep up with Ferrari's 250 LM. This handed the win once again to Ferrari, who was able to continue their sweep of the top three. And so as the legend goes, 1966 would be different. It had to be different. Third time's the charm. Ford brought in Carroll Shelby, who had been fielding his own Cobras at Le Mans, to try and improve the GT40. What he and test driver Ken Miles came up with was dubbed the MK2. Visually similar to the MK1, the MK2's defining trait was its massive 7-liter V8, outputting over 500 horsepower and capable of well over 210 miles per hour by the end of the Mulsanne. To strengthen their chances, Ford enlisted the help of their NASCAR team, Hullman and Moody, as well as the British sports car experts, Alan Mann Racing, to field an impressive eight of their MK2 models to fully take the fight to Ferrari. But in the buildup to the event, Ferrari was in shambles. Because of a dispute over driving duties, lead driver and Formula One championship hopeful John Surtees quit the team and left the Scuderia without their lead. All in all, Ferrari was only able to pull together two works teams with a third fielded by the Satellite NART group, all driving the new Ferrari 330p3, although beautiful, was down on top speed over Ford's brute force approach. So it was eight versus three. The odds were in Ford's favor. The race began competitively with an initial Ford lead giving out to Ferraris overnight in damp conditions. But as the stars shined, the Ferrari teams began experiencing overheating and mechanical issues. A sudden downpour put the final of Ferrari's hopes to rest when Goucher spun in the S's, ultimately able to carry on, but way off the pace. And so it was Ford's race to lose. Mechanical failures of their own saw five of the eight MK2 challengers drop from the race. But coming into the final hours, the three remaining led, one, two, three, and it was shaping up to be the dream finish Ford had hoped for. Commandingly leading the way and clearly headed for the win was the Ken Miles Denny Hall machine. But in an effort to capitalize on the marketing opportunity and a three wide photo finish, Ford ordered Miles to slow down and allow the other two Fords of McLaren and Bucknam to catch him. And so in a triumphant moment, Ford crossed the line three wide. They'd done it. They'd beaten Ferrari and swept the top three places. But the moment was bittersweet. 
In a shocking ruling, it was decided the McLaren Eamon Ford had technically beaten the Ken Miles and Denny Hall machine due to having traveled a greater distance because of their starting position. The four team celebrations continued, but everyone that was there knew it. It was Ken Miles who had beaten Ferrari. And so we're here to experience our own take on the legendary race. Looking at the sports car championship points, there have been some changes since the Targa Florio. The way the championship was scored in 1966 was convoluted to say the least, and so the points have been updated to reflect the real scoring system which varied race to race. Starting off the season strong, we were able to capture the win in Daytona for Ford, giving us a full 10 points over Ferrari's 7 for finishing 2nd. On to Sebring and Ford was able to continue the winning streak, albeit not because of our floundering performance. But back at it for the third round of Monza, we were able to put the massive V8 to the test and power to a somewhat easy win. But for round four at the Targa Florio, it was Ferrari and Nino Vaccarella who took the win. And even though I finished in the top five, we were driving an MK1 Ford, which was not eligible for group six standings. Runs in a separate points championship, so we handed the full 10 points to Ferrari there. Between now and then, a 1,000 kilometer race was held the same day as the Monaco Grand Prix in Spa-Francorchamps. Ferrari was able to take a works car and win over a privateer Ford. And one other event, a 1,000 kilometer race at the Nürburgring was also run, but not entered by the Ford teams. In what seemed like a surefire way for Ferrari to collect points, Jim Hall's experimental chaparral, driven by Gilles Bonnier and Phil Hill, was able to take the victory in the full 10 points of their own. And so with only the top four results for each manufacturer accounting, we come to the seventh and final round of the sports car championship for 1966. The Hockenheim event later in the season's not awarding points for the group six cars. Ford leads Ferrari by three points, but it may as well be anyone's championship. With other teams' cars able to block points finishes from each team, Ford's eight entries will surely create an uphill battle for Ferrari. So we'll take a quick look at the circuit. This is the classic Le Mans circuit. It was one of the final years that it was run without any chicanes, anything to slow the cars down. It's all about top speed and mechanical reliability. The start of the lap is very different than it is today. We'll go through the fast Dunlop curb and up the hill, over the top of the hill, maybe actually jump off the ground on a quick lap and down towards the S's. A really tricky, narrow part of the track. If you're passing slower traffic, you often have to wait until you get out of the S's to avoid any kind of conflict and what's the site of a few major crashes during this year's race. From there to the classic Tetra Rouge, a fast sweeper which you have to exit quickly because it sends you onto the Malsan straight. Nearly three miles of uninterrupted road, no chicanes to slow you down. Flat out, we'll be in fourth gear in the Ford GT40 Mark II, over 210 miles an hour, maybe as fast as 220 in the slipstream. And coming up to the Malsan kink, a fast right-hand kink, flat out on a good lap, uh, but definitely a corner where a little lifting can provide you some insurance to get through without any issue. Then it's the short run down to the Malsan corner, the heaviest braking zone on the circuit. We go all the way from 215 miles an hour down to 35, 30 miles an hour through the tight 90 degree right hander. So easy to overshoot the braking, and especially because the run into it is downhill. It'd be really challenging to get the car slowed down. From there, the circuit progresses a lot like it does these days onto the Indianapolis corner, what I think is one of the most challenging and easy to crash in corners on the circuit, the fast sweeper into Indianapolis can catch you out quite easy. But then it's through the left-handed banked corner of Indianapolis and headed towards Arnage, the final 90 degree kink that sends you on back home to the start finish. The end of the lap is the place that changed the most in the immediate years following the 1960s, but here in 1966, we'll be running pretty fast through Maison Blanche, a challenging corner where a lot of incidents occurred in real life, a fast flick with walls on each side, but then sends us towards the front straight no chicanes to slow us down to cross the start finish and begin another lap. So then we'll take a look at the starting grid and it's 48 cars that'll start the race here. 48 strong down from 55, which actually took the green flag for the 1966 race, but 48 of the real drivers and cars which took part. And it's Ferrari, which has the advantage with Mike Parks and Scarfiotti starting on the pole in their works 330 P3 directly behind them, the North American racing team 330 with Rodriguez and Baguetti. We then get to the Chaparral, which is starting third with Joe Bonnier and Phil Hill coming off their win at the Nordschleife, and then finally to the first Ford Mark II with John Whitmore, Frank Gardner's uh, Alan Mann racing entry. 
Further down, we get the third of the Ferrari Challengers with Guichet and Bandini. And then we finally get to the long string of Ford Mark IIs with Richie Axelson, Richie Ginther with us leading the way on the charge. You can see the rest of the Mark IIs there through the top 12 with several really fast cars that I know will be in the race with Ken Miles and Dan Gurney and Bruce McLaren all starting behind us. The starting position is important at Le Mans, but it's a 24 hour race, so a lot of things can happen. A few Ferrari 365s round out the top class, but they're quite a ways off the pace, but through attrition, you never know what can happen. The larger engine sports class is almost entirely full of the Mark I, the earlier model GT40s, making up that entire class except for one Ferrari 250 LM, which is entered. And looking further down in the smaller engined prototype class, it's gonna be a battle of Matra versus Porsche, Porsche with the 906, some of them with the long tails as well, but that should be an interesting one to watch play out. And lastly, there's a very small group of GT cars entered in this race, just as there was in real life. The final entry list was based off a proportional amount of the cars which tried to enter the race, and it was a really small group of GT cars for this year. But notably, we've got the first ever Porsche 911 in Le Mans entered towards the back of the grid starting in 45th. Some of the cars at the back of the pack, the Alpines, the Porsche, the Mini Marcos, are very, very slow and likely to cause some drama in spots as we try to navigate our way through them. So it'll be just as important to get through the traffic clean as it is to run fast laps uh, to make sure we make it to the end of the race. And so the grid is set and we're ready to get started at Le Mans. For this race, I'm using the Power and Glory mod for GTR2 as a base, but I've added in many other mods out there, the World Sports Car 67 mod, uh, Absolute Le Mans, Le Mans Classics, amongst a few other random cars to build the grid, painted paint schemes for all the cars to make them look like they did in 1966. And overall, I think I've achieved a fairly accurate representation of what this historic race was really like. I've spent quite a lot of time working on the AI here to try to make them as competitive as possible so we can have a fantastic Le Mans race. You'll see in a couple spots, I've allowed them to cheat a bit and cut parts of the track a little bit. They're allowed to phase into a couple walls, but hopefully not too immersion breaking, but all in the effort to keep as many cars running as possible. Le Mans was a race of heavy attrition throughout the 1960s. Something like 15 cars or so actually finished the race from a grid of 55, and it wasn't rare for it to be less than that. So we'll most certainly see quite a few cars crash out along the way and hopefully stay clear of those incidents myself. The real race was run, of course, over 24 hours and keeping with the one third distance that we've been doing all season, we'll be running a full eight hour race with time acceleration and fuel and tire burn sped up to make it interesting with lots of pit stops and stints. I'll be handing my car over to my teammate, Richie Ginther, for some of the stints and overall equal out to about four hours of driving each. My plan is to start the race. We can go about eight laps, seven or eight laps on a tank of fuel, pit in, probably triple stint the start, maybe double stint depending on what things look like, then hand the car over to Ginther and we'll swap back and forth through the night. Ultimately, I'll try to end the race with driving as well if everything plays out like it should. So why don't we get started with it? This is the 1966, 24 hours of Le Mans. Accelerate away, bogging down a bit, yellow flag waving, maybe a car stalled on the grid. A couple cars coming up the inside from behind. Graham Hill able to get there. We'll come into Dunlop Corner, nice and easy on the outside. Boy, Hill's gonna squeeze me a bit. Right out to the wall, just tapping it a little bit, come over the top of the hill. Bruce McLaren as well as we'll head into the S's, break plenty early, opening laps side by side in front. Really what we want. All right, nice and easy then through the S's. Rocket down to Tetch Rouge. So got passed by a couple cars there. Got a 365 behind me. McLaren there is on the inside. We'll take the outside line. Now accelerate down the long straightaway. Should have the slipstream in front from Graham Hill. Bruce McLaren falls in behind. Third gear then. So it looks like Ferrari out in the lead. Chaparral's up there somewhere. Whitmore as well in our 4 GT, so losing at least one, one position off the grid it looks like. Accelerating now down to high top speed. We're 
different fourth gear. It's only a four speed, this four GT, so the gears are super long. We'll hit 200 miles per hour here past some of the campers and the hedges. Clarence looking up the inside a bit. This isn't really gonna be a good place to try to pass, especially not in the opening lap. He's gonna go for it though. He's got a bit more speed than I do, maybe better acceleration out of Tetrouge. Rouge. Going to the Ferraris here as we're gonna come to Mall Sand Corner of the Kink. I'll let McLaren sweep in front. He gets right out to the grass there. Through the kink, you can take that flat on a good lap. Maybe not with full fuel at the start of the race though. Now, to Mall Sand Corner over the top of the hill. Break plenty early here in the opening lap. We caught up to the Ferraris a bit. I think we've got higher top speed. So we can get on the inside here into Mall Sand Corner. Nice and slow in the opening lap. Quite ginger through there, but down to 30 miles an hour from 215. Accelerate away then. Just want to keep things nice and clean. That 365 still behind me. Up to third gear then. P8. 365 might actually got a really good launch. I think he's in front of a few of the Ford GTs as well. Is the same class as us, but I expect him to fall back quite know. Now come to one of the most difficult sections, I think, for this car at least, into Indianapolis. Right-hander to start. Just throw the car in. Now down to first. Into Indianapolis proper. Going to slide a bit wide. Short run now to Arnage here. Final 90 degree right-hander. Down to first gear. Finally get some kind of an apex right out to the edge of the track. And accelerate it away. Bring it on home. Back towards the start finish line. So hectic start as always. Get through the final few corners here before we celebrate completing the first lap. It's a challenging part of the track too. A little bit of a lift here through this S. Up over the top of the hill and towards White House. It's always a sign of dramatic drama. Oh, some smoke in front. Ferrari's gonna run a bit wide maybe. Might have hit the wall. Wall sneaks up really close on the outside. I think I saw some bits there behind me too. Some smoke in the mirrors, so. Definitely don't want to go side by side through there. It's one of the trickiest corners and it's the reason it was removed in later years. Come across the line though, complete the first lap. So got through it, P8, lost a couple spots. It's out of third gear. Just want to settle in a little bit now. Want to, don't want to lose this leading group though. Oh, and the Ferrari out wide there, slow. McLaren backs out of it as well. Sneak up the outside of him. Down to second gear into the S's. About to outbreak myself. Still quite full of fuel, heavy car. Not sure what happened to that Ferrari in front. Stop sideways. Looks like he started going again, so just kind of a half spin, but such a precarious place. There's actually quite a few blind corners on this track. So we'll accelerate away now onto the Malsan again. So ahead of McLaren, back up to six, getting around one of the Ferraris there. I didn't catch the number on the car, so we'll have to see. I do see a red car, a couple back in my mirror still, so I'm glad I got going right away again. It's all gonna be about minimizing mistakes. There's gonna be a lot of interesting moments, to say the least, when we get to traffic, especially. It's only this very initial part of the race, the first five, six laps maybe, that will be without constant lap traffic and from then on it's just avoiding any sort of incident it's almost impossible to run this whole race without some sort of mistake some sort of incident I see mclaren in the slipstream behind me closing in i don't think he'll get to me before the kink though he's going to go on the inside lane though break the slipstream a bit just take a nice gentle line here keep it flat McLaren going oh, nips the grass behind. He's going to get a nice run coming down a mall sand corner on the inside. We'll come over the top of the hill, break a bit early. Try to use the engine to help slow the car down as much as possible. Oh, McLaren falls back in behind, so I'll take the apex. Slide the car there. Catch it, though. The wheel you're seeing on the screen doesn't move quite as much as the one of my hands does. It gives you an idea of the inputs. more subdued so quite a big catch there on the car sliding through the corner but staying in front of McLaren now so P6 still up to fourth gears we'll head towards Indianapolis again third gear second gear tiptoe it in you just don't want to run wide a bit hot there down to first take the inside on the way in down to 
Arnage, short shoot, just up to second for just a moment. There we go, nip the grass, nip the dirt on the way out. Big sandbanks on the outside of some of those corners down in Mulsanne Corner, Arnage there. Indianapolis on the outside of it. Easy to get the car caught in if you run just a little bit wide, spin. Be there with a shovel for 45 minutes digging yourself out. Come down to White House, down to second gear. Do third gear on maybe a fast lap if you're a little daring, but just trying to take it easy, not run wide. The wall sneaks up right here on the exit. Say hello again to the SO man. End another lap. Keep our eye on the pit lane for cars with issues or retirements. It's empty so far, so nobody in there. Maybe the Ferrari that spun out my pit. We'll see. Aggressive on the downshift. Gotta watch the revs. Don't wanna over rev the engine. This engine can go quite high. Let's have a second gear. Rev up to maybe 6,800 RPM if you're really pushing things, but... Oh, it's some smoke there on the left. Be a campfire from some of the fans, not sure. Right down to first gear. Celebratory fire for the start of the race. Two in front slowed up a little bit as they saw the smoke as well. It's a little bit closer, might be able to get some of the slipstream. I pulled out 2.2 seconds. McLaren we got ourselves some real-time deltas, which is a luxury that wouldn't have existed in real life. Just trying to get the draft up the hill there. They're going to be a lot tighter together and probably pull away just with the speed past some of the campers and things. No safety at all on this circuit in the 60s. Never mind the chicanes and things, but guardrails, nothing was added yet. It's just normal two-lane two lane roads. The shoulders were added in later years to make it quite a lot less tricky passing lap traffic and things. Up to the kink, though. Just hold your breath every time through there, especially once we get to the lap traffic. Over the top of the hill. Third gear down to second. Use the engine a lot to slow the car down, as they also did. The brakes on these cars were not fit for running as long as they needed to, so they could use the engine to really slow the car down, back off quite early. A little string here of Ford GTs. I think the car behind Bruce in the mirror there is a GT40 as well. Maybe Gurney's. Oh, shouldn't be looking in the mirror then. Just touch the edge of the track, the grass kind of pulls you off. Be careful about stuff like that. Down to first gear. Wide through Indianapolis. I'm just not getting the apexes very well. I'm quite tentative on all the controls. I need to get a bit more comfortable with the car. There we go. about 10 minutes in. Already some major drama. Ferrari spinning out in the first corner. These two in front gonna duel each other. I'm gonna run a bit wide. Oh, just holding on to it. Don't need to be doing things like that. That was so close to a spin. Oh, in front a spin. Graham Hill backs it into the wall. Oh, he gets it spun around. You can see some damage on the rear of the car. McLaren closes up. So just as I catch a massive, massive, almost incident, Graham Hill in front spinning out, making contact with Whitmore, I think. The GT40 is trying to take each other out of the race early on. We've got a car in the pits. Didn't catch who it was. Might be a retirement, though. Man, all right, need to settle in here. Focus forward, got around the car up to fourth. Close behind me, though, and I've got no slipstream partner in front. Whitmore is way too far up the road. How I caught the car there right before Maison Blanche. Never mind the spin in front just slowing down. Down to 
first gear and Tetrouge, rouge run wide get the car pulled into the apex just sliding the tires instead of cornering with them i think i saw the chaparral disappearing in front so it might be chaparral ferrari in the four gts be another lap or so before we start catching the end of the pack. The speed differential between some of these top cars and the end of the pack is so large. 60 plus miles per hour on the straightaway here and it was actually like that in real life as well. The speed difference is quite accurate. You can see McLaren, maybe Hill, Hill stayed out even backing it into the wall there. So look towards the inside. I don't really want to block so early in the race we're just 13 minutes in should have just enough speed to get in front of him through the kink here but he might have a massive run on me coming down to all sound corner he's kind of run wide again he's all over the place he'll needs to cool it just a little bit over the top of the hill hard on the brakes just look in my mirror hill's gonna sneak up the inside maybe down to first gear it's quite late on the brakes he actually dips out of it i'll take the apex Oh, and we got Mini Marcos in front. Maybe the slowest car on the grid. It would be a death wish racing that against these cars. Sneak around him there. It's a fourth gear. So I head towards Indianapolis now. Some of the Alpines, I think. Make things interesting here. Oh, some smoke in front. Oh, I think Whitmore making contact with one of the Alpines and behind me as well. Graham Hill hit him in the mirror. Nothing Hill could have done there, but not sure if that was the Alpine's fault originally for getting a bit wide, but Whitmore not being patient enough, maybe. Might be the last we see of Graham Hill there. We'll have to see when we come around again. And under one lap, two major incidents with him. Maybe lack of patience. I think he led early on in the real race too. I'll try to be less dramatic through here this time. I don't know how I saved it on that last lap. There's really not a lot of saving when the car gets that sideways. Right down to second gear, he's two in front. Hopefully a bit more patient than they were at the Alpine. AI do all right getting around the lap traffic, but especially when they're battling with each other for position and also passing lap traffic, just as in real life, bad things can happen. And they did, there were several pileups here. We got a few cars in the pits. One of the Ferraris, I didn't catch the number on it, but one of the Ferraris looks to be retired already. We'll have to see when we go into pit what number car that was. Down to the S's here. So Whitmore's still in front, despite making contact. He probably had lighter contact with the Alpine than Hill did behind. We've got a nine second lead on the cars behind now, still in P4. Nice and easy up the inside. I can see the two leaders in front too, so we're still packed up. No reason to take any chances at this point. If I could run a steady race and avoid near accidents like I had there. White House. Oh. What more? What are you doing? All right, up the inside. We'll get past both of them. Slow down a lot, so we're going to lose lose the two in front. It looks like the Alpine might have been going for the apex, so he slammed on the brakes as well. All right, flat out now. So I got to calm down a bit. A lot of action in the early laps. I knew it was going to be an interesting start to the race. So once things, 48 cars on the track to start, a lot of cars, so once things thin out a little bit through attrition, through some accidents, unfortunately, they'll calm down a little bit, be a little more of an endurance test rather than this sprint to start things off. Through the kink there, Whitmore's back on me from behind, he's going to have my toe a bit top of the hill down to third gear down to second so we're in the top three through all that just by playing it a little easier still only on lap five 
18 gallons in the tank. Just over half fuel. Should be able to hope make it to lap eight. Hopefully complete lap eight. Give us 16 total stints for this race. Smoke again in front. Car just right on the edge of the track there. Maybe a car smoking. Looks like the Chaparral's actually in front of the Ferrari there in front. Right down to first gear. One Alpine between us. Should be able to get him easily before White House here, even before the first set of corners. him more behind able to get around him as well just try not to narrow late apex on this right hander so we don't run out wide again worried for that marshal to stand in there too Might come down to white house just after the guardrail there break down to second gear let the engine slow the car down a bit late apex this left hander too so we don't run to that wall on the outside Ferrari in front's gonna pit. It's quite early for a pit stop. Got a few cars in the pit lane there. The Ferrari, other Ferrari's still there, so we're up to second now. It's on an early pit stop. Maybe strategy, I'm not sure. Maybe the Ferraris can't go quite as long as the Fords. Have it on accelerated fuel and tire wear just to make things a bit more interesting. More pit stops, more driver swaps and things Come through the S's. We just have the Chaparral in front. We've got another 4GT Wigmore still behind me there. Two seconds off. No doubt Gurney and Miles and all of them are back there. Just playing it cool, getting started with the race. Lap six now. Just under 20 minutes in. race starts at 4 p.m. local time, so it actually gets dark quite quick into the race. The nighttime, too, is quite short, being June. Quite different than the Daytona race you did earlier in the season, where the majority of that race is at night, because it takes place in February. Pass one of the Austin Healy's there, another Alpine. Chasing then the Chaparral, Joe Bonnier, Phil Hill. Through the kink, just a little lift of the throttle, get the car secured through there. Catch another car up into the braking zone. It looks towards the inside, we'll back out of it a bit early. It's one of the Ferrari 275s, now a third gear. It's gonna break a bit later than us on the left. The first gear should have them easily through the corner. Some of the GT cars and slower sports prototypes and things actually can be quicker through some of the slow corners just because they weigh less. This Ford GT Mark II is such a brute force approach to racing at Le Mans. Very quick in a straight line, but wasn't for the track being the way it is, might not be a very competitive car after all. all right, down to third gear, down to second. Very easy on the entry there, maybe a little too easy. We're chasing the leader though, there's no real push. Still inside the first stint. Down to first gear. in front as we'll come towards the end of the lap, make things interesting, see if Bonnier can negotiate them. He's going to have to wait behind him here through the first couple of S's. Oh, and Matra there, trying to get around. Ferrari in front will back off a bit too. Into White House, down to second gear. Matra's on the grass. Oh, Phil Hill on the dirt. Everybody makes it through alright, but we're going to have a run here on Hill. Mantra sweeps in front, we'll sweep to the inside. A bit dramatic there. Oh, 
one here is going to peel to the pits then. So the chaparral goes towards the pits. We'll come across the line as the leader. One lap seven, 10 gallons. It's going to be close whether or not I can do another lap actually on fuel. The Sprite's here. So just one second up over Whitmore. He's still with me. I think the GT40s might be able to run a bit further. I don't know if we have a larger fuel tank. We may. We may do. Oh, Sprite there right behind me. Misjudged that as well. Maybe didn't expect him to be so slow. Did he spin out? He might have. Might have spun out behind me trying to avoid how slow the GT40 is in the corners. Get around this Matra though. That was an Alpine there. There's two two sets of blue cars, Alpines and Matras. You already see the lights getting to dim a little bit in the later afternoon evening. straightaway. Nobody in front. We've got almost a five second lead. Whitmore maybe getting caught behind the Alpine behind. 8.8 gallons of fuel. To see it's about 5.3, 5.4 gallons a lap maybe. We've got the Mini Marcos in front here. To pump to the kink. Oh, pass around the outside there. Really have to let off the gas. I don't think diving towards the apex would have been the smart thing to do there. This Alpine in front. Around him nice and easily. You can see Whitmore in the mirror in the yellow. Ford still. Just got the board there. Back at Malsan Corners where the crew would actually sit in radio communication with the crew back at the pits. So we've gotten the pit board there, so we should pit this lap. Take a second gear. Just taking it really easy here, just trying to keep the car between the white lines. First gear into Arnage. Seven gallons, we might be able to go another lap. 6.9. It's quite close though. If you're really pushing, you can definitely use almost six gallons in a lap just with the way things are set here. So it would be best to pit just to be safe. You don't want to run out of fuel right at the beginning of the race. Crew's expecting me anyway. It's out of second gear into White House. There we go. All right, so we'll pit in this lap, just on the edge of being able to do another lap, but we'll pit in first pit stall, so we have to break quite early. Make sure we don't overshoot things. Down to second gear, down to first. Come to the pit stop. We can see quite a few cars in the pits. So pulling out of the pits after the pit stop. Whitmore just got in front of me through the cycle. I saw Ken Miles fly by in the number one. So he went an extra lap on his fuel, maybe playing it a bit easier so that he doesn't burn quite as much. And keep an eye on that. Come down to the S's. Down a second gear. Nice and easy. It's kind of a reset. We've got full fuel again, cold tires, just like the start, but a little less to worry about. Just John Whitmore in front. This will actually work out pretty well for a drafting partner. Come down to Rouge, down to first gear. Try to get a late apex, accelerate out. Bit of wheel slip in the slipstream now. Nobody in front of us either, so we should be able to get pretty good speed here, hopefully. So back to ninth right now. Miles sneaking by. All the cars still out, but we saw a few pit earlier. I didn't think I saw the Chaparral come by as I was in the pit, so not sure what's up with them. Didn't get a chance to talk to the crew about the order or anything like that. But got a nice slipstream now on Whitmore. We're going to be a lot faster, at least behind him. Gotta make sure nobody's coming up in front of us, though. That's always the risk. He 
take out the wall of air that was going to hit us and slow us down, though. A little bit slower, down on speed, but maybe because of the spin or something. The near spin coming into White House, who knows, pick up a little damage on the car. Nice and easy through the kink here in the opening lap of this stint. It's already getting quite dim. I guess it would be nearing the 6 p.m. hour. Be a little bit of dark a little early. In the first gear all the way for Malsan. More directly in front then. The sky is starting to, starting to turn a nice shade of pink. See a couple cars up the road there, so it won't be long until we're back in traffic, but relish the moments of relatively clear track, at least behind our teammate here. I'm trying to figure out a way to get around him. I think I'm quicker than Whitmore. He's still doing all right, despite the craziness of the opening stint. We're coming up on another Alpine here, as we'll come down to Indianapolis, down to third gear. He's going to be right on the tail of him. Down to first gear here. to the left as we'll come to Arnage. I really want to split him three wide, but they both let me up the inside, so he gets stuck there. So Alpine's just trying to stay alive. Oh, I'll run heavy on the brakes into Arnage. Alpine sneaks back in front. All right, sneak past him again. Doesn't let Whitmore through. Oh, and contact behind, too. So back around Whitmore due to lap traffic. Slower cars. He's having a tough go at it. S's here. Unofficially the S's. I'm coming down to Maison Blanche. Again, nice and easy just with the full fuel. Dip the tires on the grass there. Sets the car a little bit too much. And pivot through. Try to keep it to a half hour stint to so see a few more cars in the pits here. So exiting in front, that's the Ken Miles machine. So he's gained a ton of time, maybe double stinting tires. I have to think about doing that too, although tires don't take nearly as long as it does to fill the car. Second gear here for the S's. Got the Marcos in front again. So he's able to get back around miles, but he's gained quite a lot of time on us through the cycle. Marcos there on the left. Just making sure he wasn't going to cut in front into the corner. Accelerate out. Ooh, chop him off a bit onto the straightaway. The front end of that car not looking quite pristine anymore. And I think I see the Chaparral up the road. Get into the afternoon here and the visibility will get worse. Almost time for lights, I think. That's one of the Alpines there. Slow cars on the left, faster on the right. It's generally the rule. Difficulty comes when a slower car is also trying to pass a car and you come up on both of them. With a straightaway this narrow without the additional shoulders, there's really nowhere to go. You lose a lot of time sometimes. Better to wait, see the chaparral, maybe taking a look at the inside of a car being held up there, go into the kink. So he gets around it, but maybe lost some time. It's one of the sprites. Third gear down to second. So I can see clearly now the chaparral in front. Oh, car gets all kinds of sideways there. That's the second sprite. They're both fairly close on the circuit. Identical cars prepared together. So back to fifth right now. Not sure who would be in front at this point. The yellow flag waving in front. Take that seriously. Don't see any smoke or anything. Not a second though. Just be nice and easy. Oh, a car off the track there. Looks like the 911 maybe upside down. Rolled over. So the inaugural Le Mans for the Porsche 911. Maybe not going quite as well as they would have hoped. 
see if some spectators can roll them back over for him. Chaparral here trying to get around one of the slower Ferraris. This might be Vaccarella, actually. He's driving in this race, but one of the three older Dinos, I believe. Just sit behind him here, lose a bunch of time. Number 25. Down to Maison Blanche. He's going to be quite quick through here. That's a car. It's a great example of a car that would be great at the Targa Florio. Not so much at Le Mans with the fast straightaways. Could also be down on power. He seems a little slower than he should be. Closed in all through that. Closed in a bit on the Chaparral then. So some cars in the pits. Still quite a few running though. We got one of the 365s exiting the pits there. The third gear just helped the car rotate through. Quite, quite dark quickly at Le Mans. Starts in the afternoon. Should be a relatively short night. Little Chaparral gets held up there. Behind this Alpine, I'll sneak by the, by the both of them, so take fourth position away from the Chaparral. He got caught up. take the position then so fourth here might be on pace although depending on when pit stops happened just eight seconds off the car in front so quite a ways off you need to close that a bit definitely not slowing down at all distance. Blue, most likely an Alpine. We're going to catch him at the worst spot, too, right at the kink. Just let off the gas. Lose a bunch of time here, but want to pa probably pass him as we exit and head towards Mall Sand Corner. We're going to go sneak up the inside. Watch the mirror a little bit, although we should be far enough ahead of him. Come over the top of the hill. or a little bit slower than usual. I see a Ferrari up there. I don't know if that's the car we're chasing. Seven seconds. able to close up quite a bit. He got around the Alpine 2 through Mossan Corner. Alright, so things calming down a bit. The first stint is always absolutely wild, although we did just see a car upside down through Indianapolis here. But as cars, as a few cars retire, as things spread out a bit, it becomes that endurance test. Making it Checking off the laps, trying to get good lap times. Haven't really looked at all of my lap times yet. Just trying to get cleanly through. Whoa, gonna run a bit wide into the bank a bit. No, just as I'm talking about being clean. Able to get away with that one though. Luckily didn't bury a wheel into the sand. Oh, jumped over it a bit, but right at the tail exit of the corner. All right, that's another close call. It's two close calls on the race and I see Ken Miles in the mirror. Mistakes like that are mistakes that Miles is not going to make. He may not be the fastest in outright speed, although he's very quick, but he's going to get the car to the end. Close back up on the Chaparral. I think I'm quite, quite a lot quicker than the Chaparral is right now, but not with making mistakes like that. Clear the sand out of the wheel wells through Maison Blanche here. Should get a nice run coming out of it. VA powered, I believe, the Jim Hall machine in front. The car in the pits there is Dan Gurney's machine. Did he go that far? There's no way he went that far. It's lap 11. Either way, that's either very early or very late of a pit stop. He'll pick us up in other positions. So we're actually P4 now. is here. Here the V8 in front. Side by side a bit coming down to Tetrouge. Oh, down to first gear. 
maybe slight contact with the rear end of the chaparral. Still see miles in the mirror. in the slipstream here, although I think the Chaparral is quite a lot lighter than the Ford GT, so able to pull out a bit. I have a similar top speed as well. It's honestly a very, very good car, but being a single team, being very experimental in the ways that it is quick, make it, make it optimistic to challenge for the win. Catching a small string of cars dip out of the slipstream just for a second to see that. Things might get interesting here. We'll go to the inside. Come up to the kink though. Trying to find a place to slot in me as well. Get around this Ferrari. Right, just nice and easy make it through there. Lose a bit of time. Some mirrors, miles getting around him as well. Alright, slow it down to first gear. afternoon now. Big mess of cars in front for us to pass. It's like Joe Bonnier's going to slip up the inside of a Ferrari here. Be a 365, be a Dino. He's going to take the Apex maybe, see if I can sneak up it inside of him coming down to Indianapolis. Well, he's probably going to be quicker through here than me. Down to second gear on the narrow side. He's right behind me. Oh, cars everywhere in front. Porsche sliding to the right. He's going to wedge himself there. It's one of the long tails, too. Past the 275 there. Here's a long string of cars. Lock up the brakes a bit into Arnage. Take a narrow entry. Get around the 275. There we go. Accelerate now. The 906s are not, not very quick with acceleration. They're not too bad top speed. The Matra here as well. Sneak past him. It's just about a patience, it's about being patient here. Three different speed cars in front. We've got this Alpine, this Matra. So we can sneak up the inside of both of them as we come down to White House. Still behind the Chaparral though. He was able to get through all that just fine. Down a second gear, just let it ride through. A bit of understeer in the middle of the corner, right out to the wall. past the pits. We're just going to dip into the pits, so maybe faster, maybe just about the same speed on pace, but seems like they cannot go quite as far as the Fords can, which is ultimately going to mean they may need an extra stop in the race. Up to third, though, so back on the podium, at least for now, but we're not even an hour into the race yet. Down to second gear. in front right now, so I'm kind of in a little pocket here. 13 seconds off the car in front. Eight seconds up on the car behind. I have to imagine that's still miles. Can just see a car coming onto the straightaway behind. So miles up to P4. I don't know if there's any more Fords in front or if it's still a couple Ferraris. It's three cars or two cars in front, so it could be the two remaining Ferraris out there. Seconds up the road, pulled in a bit, stuck in some traffic. It's all going to be about how that traffic plays, where they catch cars, where I catch cars. Just try to be consistent. I've made, I've already made a, a good number of mistakes. Need to just be smooth here. Got a few cars approaching. I feel like I always catch cars as we're coming down to the kink. We get around at least this first one. Another Alpine there. We got a 906 in front, but they'll get through the kink first. They're a bit quicker. going to try to maybe pass this Alpine. I'll sneak around both of them. That's situations like that. You got to be really careful. They might not spot you coming up behind and also try to overtake. Come down to Mulsanne Corner. And a 
Ford GT in front of Mark 1. through Indianapolis though. They'll be they'll be a bit quicker. That car is the car I drove at the Targa Florio. It's just a bit nicer to drive overall. It's much more well balanced car but much down on power compared to the Mark II that we're driving. Totally different class of racing car. See some skid marks from last time through here. Exit Arnage, bit of wheel spin. So we got our 250, there's still one Ferrari 250 LM. The top of the hill towards White House. Probably stick behind him here. It's a pass but just want to be careful through it. it's a difficult part of the track easy to get into a scuffle there we go just get them on exit nice and easily accelerate away do have to be careful about cars pitting it's a 250 lm maybe oh i'm gonna get boxed in behind this alpine there's 250 275 in the pits man narrowly snake through him there we got a few cars in the pits then up to second i think i passed somebody who was pitting i didn't catch who it was had my eyes on the ferraris in front of me all right so back up to second now six second lead on whoever's behind me down to second gear into the s's red car up the road seven seconds in front might be who's in front of me could be one of the ferraris most definitely is rodriguez baguette ferraris out of the race so mike park scarfiati are driving one and then bandini and guichet in the other 20 and 21 i think are still in Quite quick, a little bit quicker in a straight line than I was expecting. It's still a lot of racing, a lot of racing to happen. We've seen how crazy it can be with lap, lap traffic so far, so I need to keep keep focused forward, just try to put in clean laps here. Ferrari in front, sweeping past the car. I think that has to be the Ferrari in the lead, pulled in a bit the top of the hill always worried about what you're going to see on the other side of that hill coming down to the braking zone Hopefully a marshall stationed right before it squirrely on the brakes there sit past this alpine Indianapolis. So start paying attention to lap times a bit if you're not directly chasing anybody, although I still am here. Just want to be cognizant of how fast you're going. It'd be easy to really back off and play it safe and lose a ton of time that you're not realizing you're losing through pit stops and things. So be able to do sub 330s on good laps I'm not held up by traffic and thing best lap so far is a 329 just don't want to overdo it but push a bit just to try to maintain lap speed got a weird line through there able to correct not run onto the banks again right, time to second gear We 
up towards the end of the lap. Ferrari might be peeling off to pit. It's going to hand us the lead again. So through the cycle of pits, I think we're actually doing quite well. The Ferrari's not able to go as long. Wasn't able to catch the number on the car, though. Alpine coming out of the pits. We'll sneak around the outside of him, but puts me off the racing line a bit. Just slow it down. Late apex. Should have at least a couple laps, I'd think, in the car before pitting again. I don't know if we're going to make it to the half hour. I was hoping to pit every half hour. Let's so make it to seven hours remaining, but we might come up just a bit short. Just 10 gallons of fuel, which should be enough for at least one more lap after this one. It's a bit short of the seven hours with the pit stop though and being stationary. We'll have to see. All right, get past the sprite. So in the lead now, eight seconds up on miles behind me, I believe. He's falling off just a little bit. They're about the same as he was, I guess. Just comes and goes with some of the traffic. Track forward though for the kink, luckily. Pitch it in just at the 100 board. You turn in, you can't see the apex there. And in the center of the road over the top of the hill just to get hard on the brakes. Use the engine to slow the car down and a first gear. A little bit slow on the entry there, but just make a nice apex. Always expecting to see a car in the sandbanks there. It happened a lot at that corner, as you could imagine, trying to get down from 200 miles per hour. One more lap, wave off pit crew this time. Revving quite high there. I didn't get up to fourth. Distracted with the pit strategy coming up. It's sun quite low in the sky now behind some clouds. Beautiful sunset at Le Mans. This is where things start to really get tricky at night. In the evening. one more lap before we pit. Should be able to do it. I think I've got enough fuel. But it won't make it. Won't make it to the seven hours mark. It's going to be really close once again with fuel, but I think I've got enough. Just better hope it's a good call this early on. Lighthouse here, missed the apex on the inside, just sacrificed the line to get through. 6.4 gallons. Should be able to make it. Should need 5.4 to make a lap. We'll see how close it is coming around. But one more lap. One more lap, boys. Finger up. Get past the pits. A few cars in the pits there. Is that Miles in the pits? There's another GT40 that looks a bit like that car. I'm not sure if that was him or not. Slow car in front, though. Car behind is still eight seconds off, so I don't think they went in the pits. I think it's miles behind me. It's in the first gear. Five point three. We should be able to make it from here. One more complete lap. Here. Ferrari in front, one of the Dinos. Done at a 
28.6 now. I don't know if that was the last time by. There's a lot going on through the pit lanes. Tough to check your time there. It's actually one of the other reasons why they had to do a lift there. Catch the Marcos, but sneak up the inside of them. That's why they had the pit men down here. Also reduce the amount of laps you would have to do between calls. You could come in the same lap that you got showing something on your pit board with them down here but also just reduces the amount of people and things happening. See on the right side as we pass the crowds there, there's actually a garage, second garage area for some of the teams. All right, definitely coming in this time. Would have waved to them there. But they should know now. It's a fourth gear here. for a minute into Indianapolis. Feels so slow going through that right-hander, but it's one of the easiest corners to throw the car away on. Slide the tires a bit. There's not a lot of grip. the final section so we're going to be down to just about a gallon I think so come into the pits this time about five minutes short of an hour so we're well off I need an extra stint to avoid it being a half stale stuck behind this alpine coming into White House it's very slow through here Ugh. It was a bunch of time there. Still pass them before the pit lane, though. All right. Come down to the pits. Trying to overshoot. Almost overshot last time in. Down to the gears. Take another pit. All right. We'll pull out of the pits then. So Ken Miles. Oh, he's going to get out right in front of me, too. Whitmore's in as well see him up on the jack stands there so changing tires i went with tires again the car was sliding around a lot especially through the slow speed corners i just don't, I don't know how it's going to be after a double stint but miles was able to leapfrog me there through the pits he came in he was eight seconds behind me like we saw i think he's about three seconds in front now all right accelerate up over the hill cold tires again full fuel down. I think I'm chasing the Chaparral once again. So good fight with the Chaparral so far. We'll set it off for a stint. I think this will be the last stint before we've got Ginther take taking over for me. Hopefully we can leave him in a pretty good position. Came in the pits leading, although a little bit on strategy, but leading nonetheless in sixth now. In a hole about six seconds in front and behind. We'll finally get our first look to at the leaderboard after this stint. See where things are at. Quite a few cars in front. I think it's time for some headlights here. There's headlights. So mandatory time or anything to turn them on just when you start not being able to see which feels right around now hopefully others have the same idea catching this matra but not super fast hopefully we can get them here before the kink nobody in front of a matra not super slow but quite a lot slower than the 4g team here we go just over seven hours so we're not super far off the goal doing half hour stints with the pit stop and everything he spent quite a lot of time in the pits the crew itself not so fast There's loose wire in the lights you'll see him flicker here or there trying to put in a solid stint here really we'll look at lap times now use those as a measure to how good we're doing. I want to be sub 330s unless there's a lap with a lot of traffic and even then minimizing that time without taking risks. That's what it's going to be all about by the end of this. Down to second gear. We got a slow car. One of the 
Austin Healy's basically stopped on the track. I think he might be rolling. Not sure what happened there. No worries, didn't lose any time for myself. lap here. I can just see the chaparral off in the distance in front. Just going into White House there, so we're not far off of him, but he's basically on another pit strategy at this point, although I'm not quite making my fuel number either, so he might just be committing to one extra pit stop. It's crazy to think you'd be thinking about the end of the race now, but we pit every half hour. It's 16 stints to get to the end of the eight. Starting to build a little bit of a crew in the pits there. A few cars pitting. Still the same number out, so I think we only have five or six out of the race, although we'll see. There could have been some stopped elsewhere on the circuit. Hopefully still a little light when the stint ends to give Ginther a little bit of visibility before he's plunged into the darkness and then we'll be back in the middle of the night for at least a couple stints. Won't make him to do the full night stint. Gotta get a bit of night driving in. Right, everybody else turning their lights on now. The Mini Marcos here will swing by him no problem. So five seconds off, we got a 19 second lead now in the car behind. Starting to see the field define itself, who's quick, who's not, who's having a good race, who's had incidents, but there's so much racing to go. Only one hour complete thus far. It's about 7 p.m. local time during the race, a little bit darker than it should be, but progressing quite well so far. It's always a hectic start. Glad to see most of the field get through it unscathed. Come through then, kink. Break it down to first gear. So he's flickering into Mall Sand Corner. Maybe a loose wire, like I said. Just see the moon rising, too. Looks so like Chaparral got around a car. Not sure who. We'll get through Indianapolis without too much drama this time. Actually, it might be miles in front. Oh, I'm seeing yellow flag, a little bit of dust. So maybe this Alpine went off. Moon there. Oh, it looks so nice in the sky. I'll slip up the inside of the Alpine. Trying to tell break ourselves. Yeah, that looks like 10 miles in front, actually. So he did come out, come out of the pits in front of us, but looks like Chaparral got back around him. Joe Bonnier. Phil Hill. Never really know who's driving the other cars at this point. You only know who started, especially while driving. Coming out of Maison Blanche, second gear. Stay nice and steady. We're catching Miles, which I wasn't really expecting. I was expecting him to kind of rocket away up front, but we're very similar pit strategies at this point. He pit the same lap as me, but might not have taken tires, which is why he was so much quicker and might be paying the price for that. One, one car coming out of the pits there, looks like one of the Ford France, maybe Guy Ligier. All right, I'm on him now. Ah, oh, this isn't Ken Miles fooling myself. One of the regular GT40s, just painted in the same shade of blue. Thought it was too good to be true to be catching Miles this, this easily. 
gonna hold up a bit here, get it back down to first gear. So we get up the inside into Tetrouge, Rouge, the 12 car. A little hot in the brakes there, but don't lock them up. The tires are useless when you lock them up. There we go. It's a much better car to drive the MK1, but it's just got nothing on a track like this. I think, though, on a twisty circuit, the MK1 is clearly a, a better, better balanced car. And uh, I think I would have been slower at the Targa Florio trying to drive this beast around there. Maybe everywhere but the final straightaway. See the bright white Chaparral in front dipping out of the slipstream, probably passing a slower car, maybe a blue car there. Another Alpine. You see the Alpine still in the race, not being bullied too much by the faster cars. We're gonna catch him at such an awkward time here. All right, just before the kink. So slow. Really down 50 miles an hour or so. gear, trying to over rev the car. A string of slower cars in front. Past the Alpine before Indianapolis, got this Ferrari 275 in front. Them through. It'll be very similar speed, same speed around the apex as we are. Maybe a little slower. Not as not as slow as you'd expect the GT car versus a prototype. It's just a very different style of car. We'll sneak to the right of them there. Right out to the dirt. Some Alpine in my mirror getting all kinds of sideways. on the right there right next to the wall is cambered a bit so it helps keep the car away from the wall but quite terrifying lap after lap well it looks like the chaparral is going in so that's what that shorter stint is doing we get some yellow flags here so just some pit drama as we saw earlier in the race he was just maybe a lap or two pitting early now he's basically half a stint off but we're up to fourth then Interesting to see how it works out though. I gotta make sure we don't have to take an extra stop at the end. Jim Hall's Chaparral, the V8, not very good on the mileage. Alright, I see another GT40 in front, which is blue, and I think that is Ken Miles this time. up the road 4.8 seconds behind as we get onto the straightaway. 22 second lead off fifth so we're really focusing forward now in front. No, no idea how far the leader is actually up the road. You get a sense of that after this stint. There's two Matras in front going side by side. It's going to make it awkward and difficult. This red one has a little more speed. Should be able to just sneak. There we go. Just sneak past both of them as he dips out of the way. Seeing the Ford coming up behind him. Right into the kink then. Late on the apex. Up to the top of the hill. in front side by side with a Dino. Couple cars 
Packers coming up. As we head to Indianapolis in the third gear. Dino is going to be quite quick on the back of that Alpine. Oh, it run a bit wide. Just saved the car there, thankfully. Just no grip through that right-hander. There's no camber. It might actually be cambered away from the apex. Try to accelerate out and get around both of these two before corners up here. There we go. Box the Dino in. He's going to sneak up the inside of the Alpine, though. 5.3 seconds up now. Just ran a bit wide there and he was able to sneak away. Get through Maison Blanche. Red car up the road. I think the Ferraris are leading the way overall, which is not what I was expecting. The Fords are very quick, obviously. We've got a couple Ferraris in the pits. All right, so we pass one. It's one position there. So they're on a bit different of a pit strategy as well. It's gonna be interesting to see how it all plays out and just need to keep on our strategy. I think it's the best we can do with the GT40 Mark II's 30 minute stints. Hopefully Ginther can stick to it as well. Get the Marcos here. A lot of cars in front though, quite a pack. I think one of the Ferraris there, Miles, trying to get around. Ferrari 275 holding up the Ford. Gonna have a nice run on him actually. So I'll head down the straightaway. It's about to get interesting. He's gonna slide to the left. Didn't see me coming up there on the left, but I'll get around him. Had a number 14 red GT40 jump out to get around the Austin Healy. Nearly stacked him up there, but got around 10 miles then, so up to second. About halfway through the stent, we'll get around this 906 before the kink. The red car in front is going awful quick, so I think that might be the leader, leading Ferrari in front. So we're all up here fighting for the lead. It's all very close. Oh, and some smoke. Car spinning to the inside, into the hedges. Just coming back on the track behind. Oh! In the mirror, saw, I think, Ken Miles collide with the Ferrari that was spinning across the track. It goes sailing off into the woods. That got to focus back on driving here, but I don't think that could have ended too well. So just as we were all close for the lead, close for the lead, battling there through the lap traffic, car spinning out in front of us. I had to go into the grass to avoid him. I might have really changed the race. Ken, Ken seemed like the other quick GT40, and I think we're right behind the leader now. In the 330. He's going to get held up here, a string of cars. Best waited out here through Indianapolis, but we're right on the leader now. Quite the string of cars. Diverse group, all stacked up behind an Alpine. Just try to stick with the Ferrari here. He's going to jet up the inside, do the same. Right to the rear of him, the 21. So that's Bandini's car. He's going to get stacked up behind the 365. They're all gonna move to the right. Oh, I'm gonna get onto the dirt a bit. Such a mess. Work it, work it out. There we go. Get around the Alpine. It's a behind a 365. He's quite off the pace, but now into the lead, passing the 330, just through a mess of traffic. This lap has been such a mess. Just trying to take it easy here. This 365 is gonna be a bit slow. I might follow him into Maison Blanche, avoid any heroics. He's going to slide out wide. There we go. We'll take him on the exit. So Ferrari's still back there. I can see him coming through the corner now, but just held up in a mess of traffic there. Back markers. 
other classes really just side by side trying to sort it out look in the pits here i don't know if miles not seeing his car so i'm not sure what would have happened there he went sailing off the track as far as i could tell Think about it now. See the Ferrari's lights behind me. It'll be a lot quicker through twisty corners, and I think we're similar speeds on the straightaways. Should be faster in theory, but he's gonna have a bit of a slipstream unless I can break away a bit. I'm seeing 34 seconds up. So the car behind me might actually be that 365 still, and the Ferrari's fallen way back, maybe jumped into the pits. Without miles behind me, too. I'm kind of in a place of our own now. Out front, 30 seconds up on second place. All right. Ford's efforts might, might be firmly in our hands at this point. Third stint in, everything unravels. We'll see if there's any remnants of what happened up here. left in the stint for me. See a couple cars there going through the kink. No yellow flags or anything. I'm not seeing any smoke or, or it might be a car off the track there. I wasn't able to quite see it. I'm gonna come over the top of the hill. Two 906s side by side in front. In the battle of the century in their class. So we can sneak by him before Indianapolis Dip to the inside. Maybe we can go around the outside. No, out of the sand a bit. Come up behind me. Ugh. Don't need things like that happening. So we're out in the lead. Just gonna try to jump around the outside and into the inside. We don't need to get mixed up with the 906s. It's a close call. The sand there on the left side of the track easily will pull you off. This 365 is actually sticking with me behind due to this mess. the 32 there. A word with them later. At the inside, the Maison Blanche. A little fast on the entry compared to usual. You can really push it through here on a qualifying lap, but eh, it's so risky in the race. All right, so out in the lead, 35 seconds now. Still have a couple laps left before pitting, I think. We're gonna be well short of that half hour mark, I believe. and steady though so we race is definitely in our control now although we might get jumped on the pit stop i think we're doing a bit better in fuel mileage i think this is a fairly legit lead at this point because it's gotten very dark now it's i would call it full night at this point i still get darker yet settling in. Have to hope Ginther's just as quick to stay out in front, at least just as consistent to keep us in the game. A lot can happen. It's not always in your control either. It's just under 10 gallons of fuel. One more lap after this before we pit and swap over. Quite a long stint to the race that definitely would have triple, even quadruple stinted back 
during this race. So we're gonna catch this 275. We're in at the kink, went off a bit early. There's so no need to push, although we're gonna lose a lot of time there. Sneak up the inside, there we go. I think I do see the car off, so I think that's Ken Miles' car sitting off in the woods. Almost wouldn't want to ask how they how they fared. I can pass the Alpine there. Too wide through here this time, thankfully. Thirty seconds sounds like a lot, but it all it takes is an inconvenient lapped car or a couple lazy spins. Le Mans these days was often decided by multiple laps by the end of it. It's still a long way to go. We'll come through the final few corners and go around one more lap. Run a bit wide there. two gallons. It's going to be pretty tight, but we really have to do the extra lap to keep on this fuel strategy. Should should be able to do it, but we'll have well under a gallon. We'll be sputtering a little bit towards the end. The yellow flag here. Just take it easy. To the Dunlop corner. It's a blind corner, so you never know what's going to be on the other side. A couple cars at the top of the hill, maybe part of the reason. we got the great ghost here. White Ferrari 365. Almost gonna run in the back of them. There's slam on the brakes. White Elephant actually is named, not Grey Ghost. Different cars. All the way out to the edge of the track, get on the straightaway. 365s, they're actually quite quick in a straight line, so you might stick with me here for the straightaway. Slowest cars in our class, but still fairly quick overall. You can see why Ferrari though built the 330. We got the Marcos in front of us. Bravely, bravely continuing on. I'm sure it's been a few interesting events in their race so far. We'll come down to the kink. here. We'll see some yellow flags again. We'll slow down. We've got a car there off the left. Just continuing on. 906 maybe had a spinner through through the kink which is not not an ideal place to spin. Continuing on though luckily. All right come down to all sand corner. Still a loose light to tell the mechanics but I don't think we're going to stop to fix that. Up about five minutes shy of the half hour. Interesting to see the mileage that Ginther can get and where that places us. Leave the car to him for at least a couple stints, if not three as well. Get back in, do some maybe morning, night into morning racing. Well, quite slow there into Indianapolis, didn't get the car on the right line. Your field of vision really narrows up here at night and it starts to get trickier to spot your lines. Never mind, get around all the lap traffic. All right, settle 
on towards the pits then. So quiet end to the stint, but man, what a hectic beginning. Maybe being one of the only Fords left in it. We'll have to see. We'll take a look at the results or standings thus far once we get out of the car. Down to Maison Blanche, second gear. Nice and steady, missed the apex a bit on the turn in. You can see the SO man again. So we're back home. Come in. Nice and easy pit stop. Tell Ginther the car feels good. Got a light problem, but otherwise, you're in the lead, so hold on to it. So, coming in after three stints to start the Le Mans 24, an hour and a half of racing, roughly, and man, so much happened. But leading the way, Richie Axelson, Richie Ginther up front. Ginther's taken over the car now, and will do at least a couple stints, if not three, himself, get us through. A decent amount of the night but the night here is not super long because it's the middle of june in france so we'll see how quickly things start to brighten up and make it at least a little bit easier but carrying on we're in front about 20 seconds at the time of the pit stop uh, of john whitmore and frank gardner and another four gt for the allen man racing team dan gurney and jerry grants uh mark two as well back there in third so it's ford one two three but coming in right behind the top three and maybe because of a bit of strategy and things are two the two remaining ferrari 330s mike parks and scarfiati's leading over uh, bandini and guiche the chaparral brings up sixth position in class doing quite well i feel like uh racing behind them a good amount in the first couple of stints but they maybe don't have the longevity needed through the uh, pit cycles to actually lead and end up winning the race but we'll see how things turn out such a long way to go Looking further down in class, the string of four GTs still running there with Graham Hill leading the way uh, from Mario Andretti and Bianchi's, Hawkins, Mark Donahue, and then McLaren and Eamon to round out the top 10. In the S2 class, which is really just the Mark 1 GT40s and that one 250 LM, we've got Peter Sutcliffe uh, leading the way for Scuderia Filippinetti, quite a ways ahead of Guy Ligier and another Mark 1. And then in P2, it's actually Matra, which has the lead over Porsche, with Henri Pescarolo leading the way over a string of Porsche 906s, Hans Hermann, Joe Sifferts, uh, Udo Schutz, and the others. Then if we see further down the order, we start to get into the attrition. And it is right now in 28th, 29th, but they'll slip further down the order. Nino Vaccarella's car is actually out as 206. Uh, and then Ken Miles, Denny Holm confirmed they had a massive accident at the kink trying to get by that slower traffic spinning out and everything heading into the woods so much like in real life although much more dramatic it's not going to be ken miles day at lama making up the rest of the dnfs a few more cars the 250 lm which we saw spinning out i believe part of that accident with ken miles and then further on back the porsche 911 is out uh, the bizzarini is out unfortunately a 906 and then pedro rodriguez and baguettis 330 p3 they went out very early starting second in the race we didn't actually see or i didn't see what actually happened so we'll have to get filled in on that but they retired from the race very early on lowering the chances of ferrari even more
So Ginther successfully completed three stints and we're just a little over five hours remaining. We're remaining pretty close to being on track with fuel. Ginther's been in a battle with John Whitmore, Frank Gardner's car, the other GT40 that was just behind me when I came in the pit. So he's lost a little bit of time overall through traffic and things, but they've had a great duel back and forth through the night. So the Whitmore car has been able to actually stay out an extra lap. They're on the same fuel strategy as us, but they extended a lap as Ginther came in the pits and we were in second position about 10 seconds behind him at that point. Back in third is Dan Gurney and Jerry Grant, followed by Graham Hill's GT40, and they've actually jumped up quite a few positions. We've got the top five positions right now for the Ford team, and although Ken Miles dropped out early, it's still looking like it might be a Ford Le Mans. But looking further down the order, you may notice an absence. The Ferrari 330, driven by Mike Parks and Scarfiotti, ran into some issues overnight and retired. They're in P4 as I left the car. So a big development. It really only leaves a single Ferrari Challenger left on track with Bandini's car. Sitting back there in P6 right now. So not completely out of it, but quite a ways back with a decent number of Fords in front. The Chaparral is still running strong, maintaining a, a top 10 and 9th position with Joe Bonnier and Phil Hill behind the wheel, but otherwise it's all Ford up front. Alright, so sneaking out of the pits here. Get there put in a few good stints and we're very much in the fight for the lead of the race. In fourth position right now, five hours, five minutes remaining. Just get used to the Cold tires, heavy fuel again, down to second gear into the S's. One car in my mirror here, but nobody, nobody in front. 12 seconds off of whoever's in front of me. I know we're fighting Whitmore. We're a little bit off strategy or pitting a bit earlier to try to make it to the hour mark. So I have to try to save some fuel here, I think over these couple of stints. Gonna do at least a couple stints. Try to get us in a good spot fuel-wise, strategy-wise, but also keep in touch with the leaders because we're going back and forth with them. When Ginther came into the pits, we'll get past these couple of Alpines. When Ginther came in the pits, Whitmore actually streamed on past and uh, did another lap, so we may see him at the end of this lap. Come out. There's one of the cars ahead of me. It's all Ford up front here. I haven't seen a Ferrari in a while. We'll come to the kink tunnel vision at night. Just really can't see anything. Oh, get it all wrong there. Oh, get the car sideways. Just catch it. Man, do not need to do things like that. All right. We're all right. Down to Malsan. Luther said the lights are still flickering down here. Definitely going out for a minute there. Make it work though. Oh, such a close call there through the kink. It's easy to judge any of these corners wrong at night because you're just, just looking at those head beams in front. It's hard to judge distance as well. Short shifting a little bit, just trying to be gentle on the accelerator, maybe brake a bit earlier, coast a little bit. Don't want to go super slow, I want to keep mind of my lap times, but to try to save a little bit of fuel, extend as much as I can. Break down for our nage, a bit slow coming into it, it's just so tough to judge the speed. We'll rock it out and towards the pit lane. See if we meet up with Whitmore and Gardner's car. Up and over the hill, down to White House. in third gear here just don't waste the extra rpms you just have to have your line better oh. all right it's two close calls now i just nicked the right rear on the wall hopefully the suspension's all right 
think it is, but come across past the pits. See one car, one Ford in the pits. Only one. Man, got a little bit of the wall at White House now in the right rear. Maybe keeping it in third gear there wasn't the right decision. Come over the top of the hill. We're up to P3. We passed, I think, Gurney's car. It was stopped in the pits. I saw red. Red Ford there, a bit deep into the S's. Just don't have a handle on the car. I wonder if it's a bit damaged, I think. I think there might have been a little contact at one point with another car. A couple close calls there. I'll try to be less dramatic on this lap. Only six seconds up on a car behind, up to P3 though. Nine seconds off the car in front. Just saw a red car out of view. Might have been one of the Ferraris, but I don't think Bandini is far enough up to be battling for a position anymore. I think their fuel strategy and overall pace has just not been quite enough after the early lead and dominance and qualifying. to the kink, keep it on the black stuff this time. The, yeah, it's the 365, the red 365 in front. quick through here. They're not much slower. Same class. Slide it a little bit into Indianapolis. A very clear night, it's no rain. It rained periodically during the real race here and there, and I do see some lights in the rear view. They look a lot like a Ford, which would make sense. Position behind is only three or so seconds off. A couple mistakes there. I'll try to be much tidier here this time through White House. The inside there, I don't want to do that. We'll back down to second again. Make sure the car rotates enough. Nice and smooth that time. Still really close to the wall. I just nicked it last time through. Maybe a bit more than a nick. The steering's still straight though, so that's all that matters. Hopefully not much body damage or anything. Come past the pits. Six five in front. And down the hill, we're gonna catch an alpine here to make things interesting. Back down to second, we'll stay in line. Losing a lot of time though. Oh, he's so slow. Dive underneath him through the second S over under. Come down to Tetrouge. Underneath the Alpine, you can see a car in the mirror. I'm not sure which Mark II that is, but it's definitely a Mark II. The speed they're coming. We'll take the outside here around this Alpine. So I get stuck up behind the Alpine for a second. Poor line to take through there. All right, so under five hours, 30 gallons of fuel left. Just don't think we're going to make it another 27 minutes on that. Try to get as close as possible and just stretch the stents a bit, save some fuel. I don't think we have enough pace to leapfrog and do an extra stop and still come out in front. Catching another Ferrari here, maybe a 206. 
screaming away there. You can feel the car right through there. Mantra in front here as we'll come down, the lights flicker off. GT behind me got around the 206 as well before the before the Malsan corner. But broke out a little bit of a gap again. 3.6 seconds. Tip underneath the 43 here. This is the lead lead car, I believe, in class. Fighting with the Porsche 906s. Right down a second. Indianapolis just watching behind me, making sure oh, no doubt be quite a bit quicker through here. Just a much lighter car. It's the P2 class. Through Arnage. the needle still so surprised they got away with the off track there early on Get down to second gear nice and easy right out to the wall again the Belgian 275 in front so he's not trying to go to the pits oh he is man oh, so close just judged it at the last second. Now we're up to second place. Passed a car in the pits. I'm not sure which one that was. It might have been Graham Hill. Ugh, car is diving to the pits. Just don't signal quite as early as they maybe should, but it keeps you awake, I guess. Another 275 in front. The NART North America team. Through Tetrouge. Get around the outside of them. Just see some of the slower cars still in the race. A little bit of fender damage here and there, no doubt. We're in second now, 10 seconds off a car in front. I don't know if that's Whitmore. Whitmore and Gardner's car. It makes sense if it is. Surprised we're not a bit closer, but we'll just try to do what we can. Just trying to save fuel a bit. It's 23 minutes to go for the half hour, 25 gallons. We're burning fuel a bit faster than, than the time. Past a 906 there though. It's got a minute up on third place, so really, I think it really is between the Whitmore Gardner car and our car right now the overall lead, but still on the same lap as a set of cars, so it's really anybody's race at this point. Right down to third gear, down to second. Down to first, lights flicker again. Secondary garages. Well past midnight now. Time, but still ways to go till it gets light. We might see it lighten a little bit here during these couple of stints. Second gear, quite slow on entry. It's just so hard to judge the speed with the tunnel vision that you get with the lights the limited perf peripheral vision you get here.
second half of the lap. Second gear. Let's take a look at our lap times. I feel like I'm going quite slow, but I'm trying to save a bit of fuel, trying to just be smooth. Just about a half tank of fuel now. We're going to find out during these couple of stints if the strategy is going to make it. It's a 231. That lap's not very good. It be at least a second quicker than that. Revving quite high there. It's just burning all the fuel but needed for the lap speed. Smooth through there, avoid the hay bales and the sand on the exit. Pulled into seven seconds, so maybe a little traffic in front. Just about eight, seven, eight seconds. 51 laps completed so far. Should end in the 130 range, I'd guess. before the cankle will sweep up the inside, let off, get on the right line. It's really quicker than waiting. I can see some lights in front. There might be the car in front. It looked like a yellow GT40. Be Whitmore and Gardner, the leader. They're about six seconds up there, so it definitely is. Still, I think 35 cars racing, but it, it's definitely calmer than it was at the start of the race. Although there might be a couple packs of cars here and there that we'll surely run into at some stage. A little yellow flag, I think, was coming out there. Yeah, it's an Alpine. Slow way down. Spun out. Maybe a contact with Gardner, we'll have to see. Some slip away through our notch there as we came out of Indianapolis. So lost a bit of time but had to play it, play it safe. Just saw the yellow flag from the marshal come out there before we entered the right-hand sweeper. So 6.5 seconds. Pulled in a bit on that lap. We'll take a look at the lap time. Let's gear there. Another 331, but had a bit of a moment during that. Avoiding our friendly Alpine. We got another one here at the top of the hill going quite slow. Passed him down to the S's, but it held Gardner up a bit because I see him there in front. Just a bit late on the braking there, running to the S's a bit deep. Compensate on the other one. They actually got us through there quicker doing that. Right, 3.5 seconds, so we have pulled in the traffic. Doesn't matter how it happens though. A couple slower 
cars ahead. You just see the brake lights now. They come up on you so quick, some of them. This is one of the sprites. Pines as well, get past them all. Gardner got past them all. Squirrely under the brakes there, car jumps sideways. Come down, I think we're catching. Oh, it's flickering again. Catching the chaparral, but it's not for position anymore. We're in second, the leader's right in front of us, so I'm actually gonna come put a lap on the chaparral. Despite its speed early on, just have the going power for the distance. This Matre is going to fade to take the apex on the inside. I know what happens when you take the outside there, so just lose a bunch of time. Actually, it's going to be a lot quicker than me anyway through Indianapolis. I think that's the leader, though. Of the P2 class, this 43, number 43 Matra, over the 906s. It's the lighter. Lower powered sports car class prototypes. We go Get around them then on the exit, pull away quite easily on the straightaways. Another 275 right in front. We're gonna catch them. Not good time. Just slip up the inside, but he has to grab some sort of apex to make that car work. through White House, so should be able to do two more laps, which is going to be way short, way short of our stint time, but we've got the pit stop as well, which will be a couple minutes to refill, change tires, so I haven't really done much work in this stint saving, so it might not be worth saving. going to make up another lap on fuel. The lap's so long. I just don't think we're going to do nine laps on a tank. Pulling in on Gardner now, though. So I think we're quicker overall. It's just the fuel that might be getting us a bit. outside the slipstream. Just up the road. If we catch a couple slower cars at the right time, we could easily swap hands. But 200 miles an hour through the dark, you forget how fast you're actually going on the straightaways after lap. Nice and smooth through there, flat. Down to first gear, using very, a lot of engine braking. I see there through the middle, dipping a wheel off. Using the engine to help slow the car quite a lot, which doesn't help with fuel either. But I don't think it would be possible to save enough to make an extra lap. You have to drive so slow. So be able to do one more here before we pit. Eight gallons left at this point. Might even be two laps behind the car in front at this point. Doesn't matter a ton right now, but at the end of the race, if we have to make an extra pit stop, it could really change things. That minute lead behind 
as well to third to take us out of the podium. So maybe need to get past Gardner here and try to stretch the lead as much as possible, knowing we can't really save. Lot still to go, not even halfway yet, still another 40 minutes. Kick a dust in front, got up to fourth there down the hill, and down to second for White House. Right, we'll come past the pits. Enough fuel to do one more lap. Montrose in the pits there, down to third gear. in quite well through the S's on Gardner in front, come to Tetra Rouge, gonna be right in the slipstream, he's got some you know, right rear damage, we saw, everybody's gonna be a little bit banged up after this race. I think overall on a straight line we're a little down on top speed, which means the easy passes are out. Just enough to stick on the slipstream, I think. Just gonna try to pass a slower car, get up the throttle. That slowed him up enough, though. Use the lapped car as a pick. Up here to the kink, though. Got another, I think, Alpine in front. Certainly a slow car. Might be a Matra, though. A little bit easier to negotiate. All right, we're getting around Gardner here on our last lap before the pits. Cars slide sideways a bit under braking. See Gardner in back closing up quite a lot in the braking zone. Take the apex, though, on the inside. Matra sneaks in behind. It's going to hold up. Gardner there just a little bit. All right, but we'll be putting in this lap to just smooth through the end of the lap. It's good to get around him. It's ultimately all about just lap speed and pace. Close up massively here through Indianapolis. I'm so slow through this section. Some kick sideways through our nage. All right, get around this Alpine. Maybe it'll hold them up a little bit. It does give us a little more breathing room as we come down to the pits. Over one gallon of fuel left. A little yellow flag in front. See some dust there on the right. Ooh, a car. Not sure off the track. Not sure who that would be. Clearly some sort of accident though at White House. As we'll come into the pits here to end the stint. Take on some more fuel and do another. We'll get the car started. Get back out. Whitmore, Gardner's car, came in the pits same time as us. So we're actually on the same strategy, which is good. They're not actually laps ahead, but they got out quicker. Driving away in front of us right now. We'll get to the end of the pit lane. We'll see one of the P3s there actually got around us. So that Ferrari's third position, the final remaining 
3.30 in the race. Bandini's car will get back into our rhythm, so we lost quite a bit of time. I think the Allen Mann crew for Gardner and Whitmore just doing a better job. I saw them change tires as well, so it's not the fact that we're taking on tires. They're just quicker. So the Hallman and Moody boys with the NASCAR experience just aren't performing quite as well at this point, but we'll see what we can do. We really can't save enough fuel to make it an extra lap, but we can make sure we get the eight laps out of it. We're at 34 minutes. We're not super far off. I think we might have actually got a minute back during that whole exchange over where we came out last time, but still not quite on strategy. Five minutes at the end of the race where we would have to pit, which wouldn't be good. So we'll just have to see how it plays out, but I'm thinking we might end up with an extra pit stop at some point, which means we just have to go as fast as we can. Flat out now down the mall saying six seconds off of Bandini. So he's still in the top five with the P3s. So they're not totally out of it, but take a lot to take away the win. They could still technically win the championship if they get the win, even if we finish second. Only the top scoring car, which counts anyway. All right, we'll come down though. All sand corner. Looks like he was able to jump a 275. side of him there, takes the racing line. I think ultimately though the strategy with the P3 is just not going to work out. They cannot go as long as us. But if they're fast, which they definitely are, they might be able to make up that time. It's, it's going to be an interesting finish to the race. It's certainly looking like Ford's day, but definitely not us specifically. I think we're maybe not fighting for the lead as much as I maybe think we are. Gurney and McLaren are still very much in the mix, and Hill's car as well, so we'll have to see how it plays out. down a White House. We've got three different cars in front of us here. So we'll take it somewhat easy. It's 906 going to try to get around. Oh, the Alpine in front. They make contact. I just totally back out of it there, but easy, guys. Still a lot of racing to go. 30 minutes to halfway. So he's not pitting this lap. This 906. Get around him here. Oh, the 330 is gone in the pits in front, so we'll get around Bandini's car. See the white elephant coming out of the pits as well there. So up to third again, 14 seconds off. Either I think Whitmore is definitely in front, but not sure the other car at this point. Might be Gurney. We'll have to see if it's the red or the black car. It's either Gurney or McLaren, I think. to the grass there. So four and a half hours to go and in the top three, which is not a bad place to be, but it's the long dark. Like I said, we might just start seeing the faintest hints of dawn towards the end of this stint, but we're going to still be pitting a little bit before halfway, I think. Should be about 4 a.m. Going for an imaginary fifth gear. What am I doing? Just stay in the zone. There's no fifth gear. Luckily not over-revving or anything like that. There's nowhere to go with the gear shift. 
those types of silly little errors. It's nothing that's going to end your race, but certainly prevent you from winning. I don't think Gurney and McLaren Gardner are making those types of mistakes. We'll get down the gears without a first gear. up the H pattern. Four speed does make it a bit easier. It's a little less shifting than you would have in a, in a five speed. But long gears mean you're not really at the optimal RPM as, as often as you'd like to be. Right, take the first gear here. to over rev too much on the downshifts with matching. You have to though, flip the throttle a bit to get the rear end not to lock. Such a stark difference racing the Mark II versus the Mark I, especially if you try to do it side by side, you just really can appreciate how much more power this one has, but it just creates a very sluggish feeling car comparatively. I just see the taillights of the car in front, but I'm not sure who that would be. And they're actually peeling off to the pit lane, so it looks like it was an Alpine. Right up to second, then. I think that was Graham Hill, the silver GT40, and that was in the pit. So it's Graham Hill that's up here with Frank Gardner and Joe Whitmore in my car. Right down to second gear. They're pitting quite early, but if they're on the 30-minute strategy and they've pushed it to now, they'll be in a pretty good spot. Down to first gear. the fences and the hedges and the poles and these couple of restaurants on the left. Great place to watch the race. This version of the circuit's built off of the Grand Prix Legends version that exists. It's definitely been updated. Some extra scenery and things. This really was a carnival atmosphere at Le Mans in the 60s. Camping and lots of rides and attractions in the front stretch area. You can see some of that as you come down into the S's or up the inside of this Alpine here. Done quite a lot. Frank Gardner's car down to first gear. Going to be a bit deep on the brakes there. Didn't get on the downshifts quite hard enough. lighter than it would be at nighttime at Le Mans then. You can still see the trees and things. Lots of stars in the sky, but make for an even more difficult video to see if it was truly as dark as it was. Box. The mantra in front here, seven seconds off the leader. This might play out a lot like the last stint where Whitmore is just they're a bit quicker in the pits, but we catch them over the stint 
because of traffic and just pace. Have to wait behind the matcha here though through White House, not feeling that adventurous just yet. Had enough close calls through here already to pass them on the exit. to the inside there, cut it a bit closer than needed. Down roller coasters, Ferris wheel thing on the left. Everybody at this point I think would be sleeping. 2, 3 a.m. is what time it is right now. Working towards 4 a.m. which will be halfway. minute and a half almost up getting near a half a lap on third place right now darkness in front. The 275, the Belgian yellow car. All of the yellow Ferraris are usually, usually Belgian ones. Country racing colors. Must have been quite odd for the four team to show up with such a colorful group of cars. First couple years they just had black and white painted cars. A ton of first gear. The 14, just regular Mark 1 in front of us. Even past him before we get up to the kink, we've got a Alpine as well. Second gear. Just watch my mirror a bit. That Mark One's going to be so much quicker through here. Right, there we go. Through our Nage. So 5.6 seconds off. So pulling in on him a bit and being a little more less fuel savvy this stint. Just trying to maintain smooth laps. seems to be working well. No steering issues or anything, although there's definitely been a few shunts at different points. A car exiting the pits in front. I think it's the Chaparral. So we're actually going to put a lap on the Chaparral. It's not for position this time. Just coming out of the pits. They're going to get stuck up. Oh, behind this Alpine. We'll just break. Catch it. Man. It's a good save there. Really slow though through the S's, gonna lose a whole bunch of time there, but better than being involved in an accident trying to force our way by until the end of the race. It's quite an adventurous pit exit though by the Chaparral in front. Should get a nice slipstream this time. I think they're just a bit short on the fuel stint. V8 guzzling a lot of fuel. slipstream though, pull up on him, make sure there's nobody in front, duck out a bit early, just don't want to get too close in the slipstream, up to fourth gear then, 
rock it on by. Here we go get around him. Don't really want to give him my slipstream either by sliding in front. Got another car coming up. The sprites. I passed him. Chaparral does the same. I put a lap on the Chaparral. It looked like early on they might be one of the cars to beat, but it just hasn't been meant to be. Down the gears, though, at the end of the straightaway, down the second. And there's Whitmore in front, Gardner. Whitmore, yellow, GT40, that's the leader right now. We're closing in three seconds back now. Indianapolis. We're just catching him on the pace I'm doing, so I'm not going to try to push any harder or anything right now. We pit on the same lap. He just had a much faster pit stop. So we're really on the same strategy, though. So it could come down to something like this in the final laps. We should have three more laps, I think, on this. This stint. in front. Run it really deep there into White House. Have to get out of it. Need to be scraping that wall. Right, Morris jump past. There's another Ford GT40 in front. I think it's a Mark 1 though. Just jump past him. Third gear here. there into the first S, compensated on the second. This is the car that early on fooled me for 10 miles. And a nice string of Fords here between the eight Mark IIs started the race and then I think the five or six Mark Ones. It's just a lot of Ford GT40s in this race. Fade to the inside to get off the throttle for just a second there. Number 12. That's Yak and Rint's car. Certainly don't want to come in together with him again. A slow car in front. Slip by the 4 GT40, just waits for me to get by him. Alright, but now in the slipstream, Frank Gardner's car. deep into the 24 hours. Just about getting close to halfway, but not quite going to reach it in this stint. Come slow down. Hard on the brakes. Deal with the lights going out. At least we can still see the brake lights in front. be too much longer for the lights. Another hour. Just get really bright very quickly. It's always good to be still running on the brakes day again. Oh, he makes a little contact there in front, I think. The 906 we're passing. Well, the 906 runs into the wall. It's able to keep it on the track, though. It's one of the long tail 906s, specifically for this race. 
added about a meter of bodywork to the tail. Understeer there. Oh. Oversteer on throttle. Chaparral closing back up behind. So we can sneak past the 906 before these curves. White House. They're struggling with that extra tail there, there just to keep the car straight. All right, right out to the wall then. Past the pits. So first and second, head to tail. We got a minute and a half back to third. Right out to the wall, over the hill, under the bridge. Into the S's, quite a lot more speed than Whitmore in front. Whoa, a little bit of oversteer there as I get on the throttle very early. First gear. Take a tight line there. Should be right in the slipstream this time though. Got a couple cars in front, make things interesting on the straight. Just gonna slide out in front as we'll get past this Alpine. Just let the car down there for a second. Clear track ahead. I'll get in the slipstream, duck behind him here. A little bit of a speed advantage. We'll dip out. I don't know if it's going to be quite enough though. We got another car approaching in front as well. This will make things interesting. Oh, it's another Alpine. I don't know if I should stay in it. He brakes. Let's me pass. Both some at the last second there, but get around Gardner for the lead. Once again, using the lap traffic. I really didn't see that car until the last second. You can only imagine how quickly you come up on some of the slower traffic. Check a breakaway, a little bit of a lead here, just a lap and change till we pit again. Down to first gear, a little bit slow on the entry. Just peeked in my mirror for a second. on him too coming down to Indianapolis right now I'm a little bit slow Down first gear he's closing in behind me but should have enough just to get through here in our notch Break myself a little bit through our nage, carry the speed though. I think he might have a little bit of damage on the front. It's par for the course at this stage. Right, you should have just enough fuel to get around one more lap. Got an Alpine catching here. If I can get him before White House, should be able to. Get the throttle over the hill, through the cut there. Oh, some smoke in front, a lot of smoke. No yellow flags though. Broke quite a bit there just to be safe, but yeah, I'm not seeing any anything. Oh, a car. It's one of the GT40s. The, maybe the Paul Hawkins one. Some drama there. So we've got one of the Ferraris pitting. We'll go around one more lap. Yeah, it's the green nose, my one of my helmet and moody teammates. Little drama there with that Ferrari and him through White House. Not sure. They put somebody between myself and Gardner, although I think he might have got around him. I see a pinstripe behind me. Anyways, focus forward. Just gonna run a bit deep there. Down to 
the first gear through Tetra Rouge, a bit wide, just balancing the throttle of the cars. Definitely have used the tires a bit. Another Mark II in front of me, so we get a nice train here. It's a few more cars up the road though, so an interesting straightaway. More might have a really good slipstream here behind me. Just don't want to do anything too silly. There's a lot of racing to go. He's going to dip out, take a peek, make sure it's safe. Always back and forth. Whoa, car in front brakes. That's what I was worried about. Able to sneak around them one more. Thankfully backed out of it. GT in front waited for both of us to go past, but just saw the brake lights come on in front. Got away with it though, right through the kink. Come down to Malsan Corner. Heavy on the brakes, Whitmore closing up behind. Won't let it scare us though, dive in. We've held pretty well on the fuel strategy, but we're just about five or six minutes off of what we need anyway. It's just not going to be possible to make that up. We have a splash and go at some point to get on the right strategy. Certainly don't want to do it right at the flag. We need to maybe pick a time where we feel like we can extend a stint a little bit. Down to first gear into Indianapolis. We're on the brakes a bit deep. I took such a bad line there, just watching my mirror for no reason. Right, into Arnage. See if Whitcomb brake uh, pits this time as well. It's Alpine in front, around him. 365 tricky. It's quite slow though through this section. Come over the hill up the inside. Right in front of him coming into White House, which is not what I want. Down to second gear. Try to run it in deep. I get through there nice and smooth. The actually wasn't as quick through there as I thought it was going to be. But all right, home free. Bring it into the pits and it back over to Ginther. Have him do more stints but pretty good through the night coming in the leader which is always what you'd want or oh, run deep Whitmore flies past too so over running my pit stall and nearly running into my crew as I was focused in the rear view there at Whitmore coming in the pits as well but getting it stopped, getting it in for Ginther to take over the car. He's gonna take over and run a couple more stints and bring us hopefully into the morning. Things are going pretty well being in the lead, but fighting Whitmore and team. They came in the pits at the same time of us, so we're really on the same strategy at this point, albeit looking like we might have to take a splash and dash at some phase. So it's Axelson and Ginther ahead of Whitmore and Gardner. Dan Gurney and Jerry Grant bring up third, and then Graham Hill and Brian Muir in the fourth four GT. A one, two, three, four, for Ford so far. Bandini in the lone Ferrari holds on to fifth position, and we'll see if they have anything for the Fords, but it's looking bleak at this point for their hopes. Peter Sutcliffe and Dieter Spori are holding on to the lead for the two liter plus category of sports cars driving their GT40, that 14 red GT40 that we've seen here or there, have a decent lead over Guy Ligier and the Ford France team. And it's still Mantra in the lead of the P2 group, head of Hans Hermann and Udo Schutz and their 906s. So as Ginther takes to the track, we'll hope more than ever that he's able to do a couple clean stints and hand us back the GT40 in the dawn.
So with just a little over three hours remaining, Ginther brings the car back into the pits after a somewhat successful couple of stints. But it's not without drama. About halfway through his run, he had a running together with a Ferrari 365 and sustained some right rear damage to the bodywork. Looks like the team will be able to fix it, but it's going to cost us a little bit of time in the pits. Despite the damage and coming together, Ginther was able to hold the lead, but this time over Graham Hill and Brian Muir. It seems like Whitmore and Gardner at some point had some sort of incident and fell back a bit, been working their way back up the order, but they're in third place just ahead of Lorenzo Bandini's lone Ferrari. Dan Gurney and Jerry Grant round out the top five in their Mark II, leading a string of Mark IIs all the way back to Bruce McLaren, who's now fallen off the lead lap. So now back onto the circuit with a little over three hours remaining in full daylight. And depending on how long the crew takes to fix the bodywork may lead us to needing to make a splash and go. But at this stage, I'd certainly say we've got a fair shot at winning. All right, pulling out of the pit, 79 second pit stop. The crew was able to patch up the damage at least somewhat acceptably fairly quick. 12 car there reversing down the pit lane a little bit but we'll come out we're in sixth place but i don't think we have to worry too much things will cycle through just three hours three minutes remaining so we're so close to being on fuel strategy Günther did a really good job at getting us back there but i think we're gonna need just a little bit more we'll see how this stint plays out and where we're at when it comes time to pit but i think this might be a good time to try to extend things a bit just see if we can get back on the good side of the strategy so we don't have to worry about it right at the end of the race and really hammer out the laps to bring us home. But cold tires, full fuel. Try to get used to the car again. Having been out a bit, it's bright daylight now. It's morning time. We've made it through the night. Still some somewhat 33, 34 cars running. So still a lot of things to avoid, a lot of accidents lapped cars, slower classes to get around, up to fourth gear on the Malsan. It's still quite tight up front, so making an extra pit stop is going to hurt us, but as we are right now, we would run out of fuel with three or four minutes remaining. We're going to have to do an extra lap, so I think we'll try to go this full stint and if things look like I expect them to, we'll pit, we'll take 25 gallons, half tank, come out, do, without changing tires, come out, do a set of laps just to get us in the good on strategy and then pit, change tires, do another full stint, give the car back to Ginther. So basically do a stint and a half here Lighter fuel so we don't have to change tires. Oh, a car just slides around the Malzahn corner there. Don't want to slide the tires too much if I'm going to try to go extra distance on these, but I think that's the way that we can do this with costing the least amount of time. We'll see how this stint plays out before we make that decision down to Indianapolis and we'll just take it easy on the way in and like how the car slid there through Malzahn corner. A bit better here. Should have a bit more grip during the day. The temperatures will be up. Getting quite hot here in Lama. Right through our Nage. 12 seconds off the car in front. I'm surprised we're in sixth pit in the lead. I think we had everybody fairly close behind, so it's no clear winner at this point. Making this extra stop, I don't know what that's going to do to our chances, but I don't think we're going to make it to the end any other way. So it's a fourth gear then. Got a second for White House to the wall. Car feels fine despite some of the damage earlier. The crew got it patched up pretty good. All right, come by the pits. Surely pick up a position or two here. You can see a couple GT40s in the pits then up to fourth. 
Let's set on another lap. Let's try to put in good solid laps here. Still quite a lot of cars out, like I said, on the circuit, but it's notably less traffic. Right down to second gear into the S's. Three, six, five in front of us, I believe. Still a little tentative on the throttle. I think if we can do maybe four extra laps, Come in, take fuel, and do four extra laps. Take something like 24 gallons to get us through that. Be a little bit more than we need. We'll play it on the safe side, do four extra laps. That'll get us well within the range to make it without having to hit with just a couple laps to go. the kink then Just get a nice line through there right hard on the brakes yeah it's a 365 in front long tailed Ferrari slide it through again track feels so much slicker there than earlier in the race maybe oils laid down up the gears. Bit of a bad line into Indianapolis, but run wide on the exit. A couple more cars lining up in front. But at least a couple laps here without traffic to start off the stint. Catching an Alpine here as we come towards White House. Terrible timing. Head up the inside though. Try to get on the racing line down the second gear. Just follows me through luckily. There we go. Come past the pit lane. Car in front looks like they're pitting. The 365. We'll head past. I don't think that's certainly not for position. Come past the pit lane. Still in fourth, but closing in on the car in front. Maybe a car that came out of the pits. Run a bit wide through Dunlop Curve. Pick up back on the accelerator. Should see who this is in front. Might be Dan Gurney. Right down to second. We lost a lot of time fixing that damage in the pits, I think. A lot more than I thought we did. Right, get up the inside of this Alpine. See if I can get the second one into Tetra Rouge. Down to first gear. This is the red Ford team car. Gurney and Jerry Grant. that Alpine so if they just came out of the pits they're on the right strategy to make it to the end I think five more stops Now, every 
good time. Just grit your teeth through there. Hope you got the line right. A lot easier in the daylight though. You can finally see next to the track. Ken Miles stricken Ford is still there in the forest. All, right, all the way down the gears. First gear. Try to finally get the apex here, not just slide through the corner. that Alpine Got Matra in front now should be just far enough ahead to follow through Indianapolis I think be quicker through here than me anyway all right down the gears Could be on the brakes oh some smoke in front sounds like they're able to get through whatever it was maybe Gurney's car so Gurney's up in the top three First gear and up. Right hander. A little bit heavy on the brakes following the Matra. He's gonna fade right. I'm gonna sneak by. There we go. He's got some damage on the headlight. I'm gonna catch this sprite here. Both sprites still in the race, I believe. I'm leading class. It's a small class, but head to tail leading it. Down a second for White House, thrown off the rhythm a bit there. Slide it through. Past the pits again, just looking to see cars in the pits. There's a Ferrari there, but I think it's one of the slower Ferraris car exiting here. It's going to be right on the line, one of the Matras. Sweep out wide around the outside. Just have to slow down a bit more than I want to. to make it work. Gurney passing a car in head. It might be the 14. It's the two red Ford GTs side by side. Mark one and two. Apex there, but get onto the straightaway. Fourteen car weaving back and forth. Pete Sutcliffe. They're in close to the top ten overall at this point, leading S2 class, S2 plus. They'll get past both of them though. more cars ahead might get get to just before the kink looks like the other Austin Haley no Ferrari 275 the drama's there all right clear track get up to the kink again nice and easily through Box, just let the engine help slow the car down. A little too fast there. I think I'm just taking it a bit too fast, but definitely closing in on Gurney's car in front. Which we're definitely going to have to pass some of these guys on pace if we're going to pit an extra time, even for a short stop. Let's see how close we are to on the right strategy for within a couple minutes might forego the short fill and see if we can actually stretch it but it hasn't been possible so far doing the short pit now gets us a little bit of extra time to do some laps instead of doing it with 20 minutes to go or something fighting chance to pass back some of the cars. Right, it's Maison Blanche. Let the 
flag man was going for the yellow flag there for a second. Is it at the ready? and easily through the start of the lap. The car feels pretty good now that I've got the tires warmed up. It's just getting used to it again, out of the car for some time. Just about the same pace as Gurney though. We're not really pulling him in, but we're not losing him either. A lot less traffic to contend with now too, a lot less shakeups throughout the lap slow down or speed up the other cars just under 20 gallons so far we get this lap should be able to do at least another four laps I would think and three laps it's a change PMs rise over the top of the lift. You get a little bit of air there, which makes it so hard to brake. The car is very light. Tires and brakes don't do much coming down the hill until the car settles. conservative here. Just gonna run a little bit wide, miss the apex, got a weird entry into Indianapolis. I feel like I almost never get that corner right. It's so tricky in these cars. needle here. Don't want to touch the dirt on either side. I think that's what I did very early in the race. Shoots you offline a little bit with the berms. Grab a bit of the grass there and on the inside. Whoa, a little more sideways than I would have liked. Come back to the front straight away. Alright, seat. Whitmore's car in the pits there, the yellow GT40. So back up to third. So Whitmore got back around us as well. It's very off cycle. It's going to be very interesting how all these strategies play out towards the end of the race. Everybody's going to miscalculate it and have to pit just with a few minutes remaining. So we're trying to avoid. It's so difficult to make the call. Should we pit? try to compensate for the time now or just see what happens you know, there's obviously no yellow flags or anything like that which could really change the strategy it's all just hard running but if there's a lot of traffic or not sure what the right call is going to be but i think we need to get back on the right strategy so that we don't pit with a couple minutes remaining it's one of those decisions that will haunt you if you get it wrong make you look like a genius if you get it right. We're using about 5.3, 5.4 gallons per lap, maybe a little less on some laps. 
I do put enough in to do four extra laps on the same set of tires, the car will still be fairly light. Be a lot better than trying to run a second stint on the same set of tires. Whoa, a little bit wide there through the kink. Didn't get it turned in quite well enough. down the gears. Looks like we caught, finally caught another car. It's been quite quiet back here. The lap traffic, maybe the only opportunity for things to get shaken up a bit. Gurney's quite quick. Or Jerry Grant, not sure who's at the wheel at this point. To imagine all the teams will have their top drivers finishing the race. But still ways to go before that happens. The final driver changes and everything. And we'll come down to White House. Get around that one Alpine, get another one right in front. Got four in a row here, still running. So the inside of one, the one pitting. Just always worried about the pit stops and cars entering the pits as you try to pass them. Oh, passed another car in the pits. It might have been one of the Ferraris. Could Bandini be that quick? So I think I'm chasing Gurney now for the lead. Yeah, he's still in front of me here. A second but I'm pretty sure Bandini and the Ferrari was in the pits so somehow they've come back after being well down in the top 10 Maybe not as quick through the night but now that it's daytime again it picked up the pace so the Ford versus Ferrari battle still very much alive Let's look around this 275 Six seconds. Lost a bit of time to Gurney there. Only two gallons. To watch the fuel. I'm not sure how much. I'll be able to make it an extra. Should it be able to do one more lap? Hopefully. If not, we'll definitely have to go for that extra partial stint. Alpine right in the kink to let off the throttle here. Let's look around the outside of him. Oh, I never like going through there too wide, but much better than trying to force it up the inside. So lose a bit more time to Gurney in front. find his way to the lead. Always quick and, and everything. Being his teammate in the Formula One championship for this season, surely want to beat Richie even a bit more. the dirt to the left there. 
right, so we should have just enough fuel to make it one more lap. It's gonna be tight though. That'll put us with quite a few extra minutes, so we will. I'm gonna pull the trigger on the extra partial stint. And we'll go in and we'll just take some fuel. It's gonna be very, very tight to do one more lap, but definitely have to do that out every bit of lap and fuel that we possibly can at this stage. We're going to be right on empty coming back to the pits, but we should just be able to make it, I think. 5.5, man. It's going to be tight. We'll go around here. I'm not sure leaving the pits. Should be able to just get him before the first corner. Hopefully the car doesn't start stuttering with a few partial gallon left back in the lead though so I think Gurney pit that time it's an interesting no idea what strategy different drivers are on we've gone from sixth to the lead in this stint that means there's a lot of cars all with very close to each other but different strategies Sixth to first and not really passing a single car on the track. Fill it up 23 gallons or so. We'll go out and do four more laps. That should get us well within the range to get back on the main strategy. As long as I can make it around on this lap, back to the pits. Just start sloshing the fuel, fuel around by moving left to right. Chasing this 365 again. Come up to the kink. The mall sand corner. Catching an alpine in front as well. Interesting end to the lap. Let the crew guys know we're pitting this time. They should know. 365 waits for me to get by. It's going to be so close on fuel. Short shift. Try to save a little bit. seconds up on the car behind it's gonna take us longer than that to pit but not too much longer to do a short pit here we're certainly gonna have to make up some time on the track though this extra pit stop right, we're gonna catch this 2752 through the end of the lap one point two gallons have just enough here. Just need to roll down the hill now. We could probably make it on rolling speed alone. And on the inside of that 275. Oh, he's right there behind me, too. All right. Made it through 0 0.8, 0 0.7. Very close on fuel, but just enough to get there. So we'll take... We'll take maybe five laps worth and see how the car feels. All right. Come into the pits down the gears just find the crew guys don't slide past this time all right so the crew's getting just about 27 gallons or so in the car it should be good for at least four laps looks like bruce mclaren in front's pulled away with no new tires just going to take this quick fuel load get us back on sequence with everything start the car here 43 second pit stop is just about half as quick as usual get away from the pits there a little slow you can see quite the long list of retirees here on the right side, some looking a bit worse for wear. Pass this GT40 on exit. All right, get back out. So we want to do 
some good laps here. Got used tires. It's not going to be optimal, but lighter fuel. I think it's better to get these used tires through some lighter fuel load. It should just be, hopefully I can do five laps. That'll get us well under the half hour mark and back on a strategy to get us to the end without having to pit with a couple minutes to go or anything. even short fill towards the end but certainly going to lose a little time through this would have been better to have been able to stretch it but it's just so hard to make up an extra lap here especially with the increased fuel burn one of the negatives of that it's pretty solid eight laps is all it can do on a full tank we'll do at least four here hopefully five should have taken enough fuel for five the back and forth now 10 seconds off whoever's up front I think one of the Ferraris might be up there. Bandini, of course, by now. Only, only 3.30 left in the race, but somehow they've been quite quick through the night and into the morning and have picked up quite a few spots, especially as a few of the, the Fords floundered. With a little less traffic now, maybe the Ferrari is able to turn out some quicker laps. Not sure. Looks like we're catching a Sprite here. Caught to the kink, not gonna get him in time. A little lift here, should be able to easily get him on the exit. Tires are pretty warm at this state. Shouldn't have to worry too much about that. Car sneaking off there through Mall Sand Corner. Down a first gear. Try not to go too deep into it. Slide the tires just a little bit. think they'll be fine through this half a stint but running them a full stint two full stints on the same set I think would be a little bit too much especially with the full fuel load it's already difficult enough on a new set of tires got a second gear for Indianapolis this left is, is Indianapolis but it also is the name of the right-hander that comes into it it's Indianapolis section more like right into Arnage slide the car through there I'm not sure who's up in front it might be McLaren he pitted in front of me pretty quick pit stop too shame to lose this just based off pit strategy and things but it's a huge part of Le Mans. a lot of varying strategies though we're not really going to know how it all turns out to the very end I think we're doing the best thing possible right now to get us back on a solid strategy for the end a little bit wide there through white house the pits just take a look it's like one car is in there is Graham Hill's car the silver GT40 so we got up to third now swing out for another lap and try to put as big of a gap on him as possible he was just coming into the pit stall too so we're not that far behind pitting right at the two hour 30 mark oh, a bit wide there through the S's have to stab the brakes halfway through Alpine in front here. Down to first gear. Swing to the right. Maybe be able to zip up the outside. Maybe should have gone to the right there, but didn't get around him. Just a breath of the throttle. Probably wouldn't have been expecting something like that. to 20 gallons one lap should be able to do including this lap hopefully four more be well under two and a half hour mark but I think we'll run a bit shorter than the half hour continually so it should equal out at the end hopefully fingers crossed 
kink. Miss the turn in just a little bit there. Breath of the Throttle get us back on the line. Kitchen Alpine here as we'll come to a break. Straight away, right down the gears. Actually breaks quite well here. Down to first gear. It's going to park it on the apex. The rear end loose, all kinds of torn up. You would see a lot of cars like that in the races in the 60s, battered and bruised by the end of it. A lot of wrecked cars as well. It's played out quite realistically maybe a few more on track incidents than mechanical failures but it's all equaling out a bit black car in front here down to first gear finally get the apex through indianapolis little bit to get on that dirt on the inside it helps rotate the car a bit a whole mess of cars in front probably catch them just about that white house get alpine directly in front catch him before try to carry through here on the inside right, this matra in front will follow him through Gets through there, no problem. Pass the mantra before the pit lane, no risk of him pitting. The car pitting up there though. Might be the chaparral. Well out of the running now, at least for the lead. Coming past the pits. A bit hot into Dunlop Corners. The car rocked in. Pretty soft suspension here, 16 gallons. Second gear pulling in nicely. Yeah, it's Bruce McLaren's car, and they've lost a lap somewhere. So they had some sort of trouble through the night because they were quite quick early on in the race. A bit down on speed now, are able to catch up to them pretty, pretty quickly. Small string of cars in front. Had a better exit than McLaren, though. Might let us by, hopefully, being down a lap. At least one lap at this point. So we're eight seconds off whoever's in front of us. Two hours 26, so we'll be quite far. Pass, but at least we'll be able to pit, I think, with hopefully 20 minutes, 25 minutes to go at the end. Clarence all over the track behind us as we dip out of the slipstream to get past this 206. So we have an Alpine in front. We'll just get by him before the kink. We've got another GT40 in front, too. This might be the Andretti car, which I feel like we haven't seen much this race. It's not for position, though. They look like they have some damage as well on the left rear. Oh, a car. It's quite a lot of air there over the top of the hill. Just hear the tires locking up as everything got light. Get down to first gear. It's going to block us. Yeah, it's the six. So it's Bianchi and Andretti. Stuck up behind the Sprite here. Whoa, I was trying to swing by. Man, so close on the grass a little bit. Able to get him though. Close calls. There's a bit of time to the cars in front, but at least make it through in one piece. Right down to second gear into Indianapolis. A little tentative. As always, down to first gear. Slide it through the tires. Definitely have a lot less grip than in a normal stint. Just need a couple more laps out of this. But it's well within the range. Twelve 
in front of us now, Mark 1. Following through White House, we're both going to catch an Alpine. I think things interesting on the exit. We get by the GT. And then the Alpine, there we go. Split them down the middle there. All right, 11.5, so should have enough for two more laps here. It's going to be tight. Should get him past the pit lane. Still in third. Down to third gear. Right against the inside wall. Blind corner there. It's so easy. So hard to see what's ahead. So easy to have run up on an incident or something. Just to watch for the flags being waved and trust that they're doing the right thing. All right, through the S's then. Five seconds off the car in front. It might be might be Bandini. The car in front, red Ferrari, and it seems awful quick. Four seconds off, second place. I'm not sure how far behind the leader. This might be the gap we're dealing with right now to make up. To get back in the lead by that 275. Flat out fourth gear. Down a little bit on speed, I think. Just about hitting 209, 210. Up to the kink. Flat through there. And six gallons. Yeah, it's definitely the 330 in front. So that's Bandini in second place. I don't know how they were able to get back that much time, but clearly they're quite quick. I think I'm a little quicker right now, but I bet they're on a fuller fuel load at this point be all kind of off sequence and I have to pit an extra time here so we've got a lot of ground to make up fourth gear then into our Nage, locked up the tires a bit on entry. Struggling for grip now on these. Just need one more lap out of them though. Haven't had any sort of tire failures or anything yet, so hopefully they can last one more lap. Get us through this kind of awkward stint. second gear then just gently through lighthouse just missed the dirt and grass on the left side make sure it doesn't spin the car all right we'll come past come past the pits chasing the ferrari oh, we got another car in the pits that might be with yeah that's the leader gardner and whitmore all right get past them up to second then we're gonna pit next time by but that gets us roughly on their strategy we're not totally out of touch with them yet with quite a lot of ground to make up I think that's the distance we're gonna have to make up to get back to the lead just gonna be on fumes as we come to the pit lane this time with two hours 20 remaining less than that by the time we get to the pits I think we'll be on a perfect strategy to pit with 25 or less minutes to go at the end. And a perfect stint to round things out, especially if we get that extra lap at the end. You get to account for that. Right up to fourth gear. So second place behind Ferrari. Two hours, 20 minutes to go. 
I don't know how they got back in the race, but Ferrari's really trying to take it to the end. The lone Ferrari remaining. They win the race even if we finish second, like I've said. If Ford finishes second, we could still lose the Constructors' Championship, which is what everything's all about to the king feel like I'm gaining in on the Ferrari definitely should have a higher top speed unless the damage has hurt us that much but I think we're slightly slower not too much though slightly slower than we than we used to be all right down the gears 2 gallons gonna be a bit deep on the brakes this time there we go get it slowed up wave to the crew here let them know we're coming in next to this Ferrari as we end in this partial stint. How exciting would it be in two hours time if things ended up this close for the spectators. I'd rather be in the lead. We've got some yellow flags waving. All right, slow down. Oh, Ferrari dips on the grass, just trying to avoid this Alpine in front. Looks like the Alpine had a bit of an issue through that corner. Down to Arnage. Be able to sneak up the inside of the Ferrari as he's stuck behind. Oh, knocking fenders a bit with Bandini. Be able to sneak around him and pass the Alpine. We'll both get caught up there. All right, so back to the lead just momentarily here. A little bit of contact with Bandini. Struggled to get by the lapped cars. We'll come into the pits this time for a full stop, full fuel tires. The tires thankfully made it. Just a couple corners left. It's out of second gear. Nice and easy. Here we go. All right, through White House. You can see the Ferrari behind, but we'll dip in the pits. I think he's going to continue on, if I'd guess. I'll just try not to run too fast here into the pits stop for our crew oh it does look like he's coming in so we're on the same exact strategy as the ferrari as he wow he whizzes by all right pit stops wrapped up get the engine started get away i haven't seen the ferrari leave yet but while we we're in the pits gurney gurney got by in the red gt40 i just saw whitmore pull away too it looks like the ferrari's gone as well so we're back to fifth now. And this is the gap we're dealing with. I think at this point, probably a half lap down off Gurney. I'm not sure if he's actually leading or not. Get up the gears, though. Try to settle in full fuel, cold tires. Just take it easy here for the first few corners. Get an Alpine in front. is there. Catch him right at Tetrouge. Trying to get a good exit here. That might be McLaren up the road. Ten seconds off. Maybe off McLaren. Though I thought he was a lap down before, so we'll see. I need to push this stint now. We have no concerns over fuel. strategy we're on we should have to pit four more times I'm counting right maybe five but it'll set us up to be just fine for the end of the race we'll have plenty of fuel knock on wood even if we have to do an extra lap just two hours remaining in the race all right come up to the kink Flat out here, a bit late of a turn in, but able to get the car to stick around. The car in front's pulled to 11 seconds. Just keep an eye on that gap. Hopefully we can close it up. It's definitely a GT40 in front. Go a little fast into Malsan corner. Slide around again. up the gear.
years. When you're through the night at Le Mans, it feels like you've made it towards the end of the race, but the daylight on the other side is even longer than the evening. A little conservative there into Indianapolis, just trying to hit my marks a bit wide. It might be the purple, might be the Andretti Bianchi GT40, which I really haven't seen too much during the race. I think they were a bit further back. But maybe they're in front of me now. Well, 13 seconds in front is pulling away from me. I have to hope the strategy goes our way a little bit if a set of teams miscalculate it. I have to come in right towards the end. Second gear. Oh, yellow flag any cars slow car way up the road oh it might be the chaparral going quite slow there but speeding back up it's like they're not going towards the pit lane so some problem for the chaparral but able to get going again fall in line gt40 in front lost a bunch of time because of that but we're definitely not chasing them for position still in p5 some drama for the Chaparral in White House. Following through the SS here is quite slow on the exit. Pulling down to Tetrouge. Rouge. Should let me by. He's a lap down at this point. Multiple laps down. But still, I believe, fighting in the top 10. A little bit of damage on the front of the car. He's going to swing towards the inside, but I should be able to rock it away from him. Well, GT40 in front's quite slow. All right, me out. I was looking in the mirror. Yeah, that is the Andretti Bianchi GT40. He's stuck behind the Alpine to let me by. It threw me off both of them diving towards the apex. Just looking in my mirror at Jim Hall's. I think our top speed's higher, so I should be able to pull away towards the end of the straight. He's got the slipstream with me. Just keep me honest here. Going to the kink. Small string of cars ahead, but I think we'll maybe catch them in the braking zone here. So pulling up quite fast. Is able to brake so much deeper than we are. Just a much lighter car. 15 seconds off now after some of that drama. The Ford France GT40 in front. I'll stick behind the 206 here. We get by both of them. We got a Matra in front now as we'll head down to Indianapolis. M3 is going to be quicker through here than me. Just about the same speed, maybe not quicker. Could be off the pace, just pacing to the end, trying to get to the end of the race. So we'll squeeze by into Arnage. Narrow turn in, but there we go, get around him. Give me a little bit of a break from the Chaparral as well. Just another second on the car in front. I believe the Ferrari's in front of us, which is, again, so surprising. Based off what happened in the early race, but maybe they ran into troubles early on and have just been clawing it back ever since. Maybe faster on raw pace, as we saw in qualifying. over rev there, coming into White House, but got the car slowed down. Looks like we're catching somebody in the pits. 
It's like Dan Gurney's car, so GT40 on jack stands there getting a tire change. It's up to fourth now. Oh, we got car almost spinning out in front. A little bit of smoke. There we go. I see GT40 and an Alpine maybe having a little disagreement. Looks like the McLaren GT40. It's on for position though. Pulling up on him quite quick. So if I can get by both of them here, he'll let me by. I should be able to get by the Alpine now, but they do wait for you to get by being many laps down at this point. Right, nine seconds off the car in front, so pulling in a little bit, although I don't know if I was chasing Gurney before. Just under 30 gallons. six laps or so. Get us well under the two hours to go. We'll hand the car to Ginther for his double stint and then take it back over at the end for a stint and a half or so to get us through the finish. Hard on the brakes. through Mall Sand Corner a little bit, turned in a little too fast. Car's feeling good though, making it this far into the race, three quarters of the way through. The car's still in one piece, no major suspension damage or anything, despite a couple close calls and tracks and things. It's held together quite well and I think we're set to try to get up towards the front but uphill battle now. Right down to first gear. Squeezing the brakes. Just trying not to lock up the tires. Cars just headed up through the S's here. Likely get through all this just fine. Be an amazing place to watch the race in White House. Scary place as well. Cars thread the needle through there. All right, nine seconds back, so I've pulled in a bit on the car in front. We've got a few cars in the pit lane, one of the 365s, a couple of the 365s. Pushing now, trying to use whatever's left of the car here for the final couple hours. If it's run well so far, maybe we can push it a bit more to get to the end. Right through Tetrouge. Oh, seven seconds now, pulled in quite a bit. is that towards the end of this stint we end up in the lead because of pit stop strategy and that means there's a chance they could also cycle that way right at the end of the race. Catching another Alpine. Just pass past him. Feet making it this deep into the race, driving a car that slow comparatively. Braking 
a car up ahead in the braking zone. Five seconds off now. Looked like a GT40. It might be the car we're chasing. Although, it seems a little closer maybe than five seconds. get on now. A little loose braking into Arnage. Car breaks away slightly but slide it through the corner. Feels like at low speed you're always kind of sliding the weight of this car. second gear just talking myself through the shifts in the corners make sure I don't miss anything looks like we're catching a car I'm not sure if they're in the pit lane or not looks like there might be a car in the pit lane there looks like the Graham Hill GT40 so up to third now Again, Alpine exiting the pits here we'll swim around the outside of him so that was the Graham Hill car, just pitting at the two hour mark. They're right on the line for making it to the end with four more stops. They weren't so far up the road either, so we may have to actually catch him and pass him, but we can hope get there's able to put in some good laps as well. through the stint now. Go by so fast. Fifteen seconds off second place. One of the cars in front of me is the Ferrari. Here, on the two seven fives. It's the Nart two seven five still running. Under two hours to go, though. We've got eighteen gallons. We've got another three laps, so we're sitting in a pretty good spot. We probably took on a little more fuel than we needed to, but better to be safe. We're gonna have to make the stop either way, so. Side a bit. There we go. Just trying to be very smooth with the inputs. Just keep the car headed forward. You want to treat the car so gently for the full race. in front, but I think it's a 206 Dino. A little bit wide there. Come down to White House, follow them through. Second gear. 
Takes a lot of the grass on the entrance, both sides. Scoop by him on the outside, there we go. Into the pits here, we've pulled in a lot on second place. Fourth gear. Close to the wall on the inside, just trying to get a good line. Got an alpine here. Should probably get him before Tetch Rouge. I think I saw Whitmore up the road. So we're chasing the Whitmore Gardener car again. We've pulled in a bunch where we got caught up there with the alpine. 7.2 seconds now. We've got 45 seconds up on fourth place. Bring in on that 100 lap mark. Sun gives you plenty of time to check all the gauges, make sure everything looks good. Temperatures, pressure. Through the kink there. Down to first gear, a bit fast on the entry, slide it through. Whitmore's passing a slower car. Might be the Chaparral again. It's a white car. Could be the gray. The uh, white elephant. White elephant Ferrari. Well, I haven't seen that car in a long time. I don't know if it's still running. Likely a Porsche. First gear, slide the car a little bit. Yeah, it looks probably a Porsche, but we'll see. It seems fast. So come to the line. We're gonna be very close to make it two more laps. Should be able to though. It's gonna be very close. We'll have to see what it's like next time around. It'll still be okay, I think, to pit on the next lap, but better to extend it to. That might actually be the white elephant Ferrari. Just based on how fast they're going. Looks like Whitmore's in the pits. All right. So we'll get second position there. We got a couple cars exiting the pits here. Porsche on the inside. seconds off the lead. They need to be time that we make up. Whitmore certainly is on a fine strategy. 9.5 gallons. Might have pushed a little too hard at the start of the stint and just burnt a little extra fuel for the first few laps and aren't going to make it to eight laps, which I was really hoping for. We're seven minutes to the good right now, though. The time.
time stopped in the pit lane to add that in as well. So I think either way we'll be okay, but it would be great to make it another lap down to eight gallons now. Years and definitely is the white Ferrari. He's able to nearly keep pace with us in our class again. And the slowest of the top class. I don't think we're going to make it another lap. If we have less than 5.4 gallons, I don't want to chance it car to be coughing coming to the pit lane. Right to the outside of the track there. I think we're just going to be a few tenths of a gallon short, but we would run out. White House on the next lap, I think. So not able to go the full stint distance this time, I don't believe. We've got this Alpine in front. He's going to take the line. Oh, man. Sneak around the outside of him. Lost a lot of time there, though. Yeah, we're going to have to pit now. Oh, so close. I might be able to just make it, and certainly if it was for a race win would try to really ultra save, but I think we'll still be good on the strategy anyway. We're 10 minutes to the good right now. So we'll hand the car over to Ginther here. We'll go out and do a double stint and get us within the last 50 minutes, 45 minutes or so. And we'll take it to the, hopefully the victory. So we come into the pit lane in second position and Ginther takes over the car for his final two stints. Looking at the current running order, somehow the Ferrari has gotten back to the lead, Bandini leading the way overall with less than two hours remaining. We occupy the second position, but we'll undoubtedly lose that through the pit stop cycles and it's really going to depend on how stuff cycles out, but I feel all right about at least a top three finish. We would certainly love to go for the win. It seems like we have to close maybe a 15 second gap right now on the Ferrari to be able to get there. The Dan Gurney, Jerry Grant red for GTs in third position with John Whitmore and Frank Gardner in the yellow GT in fourth. Looking a bit further back, there hasn't really been changes in the S2 or P2 categories, but with two hours remaining, we have about 30 cars running still, which is quite a good number, but certainly attrition has taken its toll.
So Ginther comes to the pits with just under an hour remaining, 57 minutes and some change. Not quite as far as we were hoping we'd be able to go, but he ran into some lap traffic and I think sustained a bit of aero damage, which set us back. As he was coming into the pits, he was in third place behind Dan Gurney and Jerry Grant's car in second, and still the Ferrari out front, almost by a minute now over Dan Gurney. It looks like Ferrari might have tricked us all here, started off the race slow and come through in the end, but there's still about an hour remaining and a lot can happen. So we'll jump back in the car and should be able to make it in just two more stints to get to the finish of the Le Mans 24. All right, so we'll get the engine started. Sprite just coming to the pit lane in front, but we'll rock it away. Just one more pit stop if everything goes right. With the pit stop timer, just about 55 minutes, so we're just gonna make it, I think, on fuel. Got the Chaparral streaming by. All right, away we go. We're in fifth position now, coming out of the pits going to be a Herculean effort to get up to the front, but you just don't know what's going to happen at the end of such a long race like this. Down to second gear, we'll come into the S's. Nice and easy, full fuel, cold tires, going to remind myself again. I don't know if anybody has anything for the Ferrari, though. They just somehow snuck their way to the lead overnight and into the morning and haven't looked back. They've gapped the field quite a lot up front. Still on the lead lap though, 34 seconds off of fourth. There'll be some pit stops and things. Nobody's gonna be able to make it from here to the end, so I'd expect everybody to have at least two more stops in front. I think we'll pass a few on strategy, and as I come into the pits at the end of this stint, we'll have a pretty close look to where things sit. out down the straightaway. Ginther got a bit of aero damage. He's running with a slower car. So I don't know if we're down on top speed. It looks like we're fairly close to where we were without the slipstream. Getting up to 210 now as we'll head into the kink. So I think we're all right on top speed, but nobody to slipstream with. First gear, a little hot coming into Mall Sand Corner. Oh, we're gonna half spin. Get the car away. It's not what we need to be doing here. Wasting some precious grip on the tires. The car's so heavy with fuel though. Try to settle in. Indianapolis. Keep the car under me this time. Don't want to slide through here. Slide the tires on the exit. Rear end is really happy right now. Sliding around. Got an Alpine in front, we're approaching. So we'll come up to these S's, gonna catch them at kind of a weird time. Should wait on the throttle a little bit, accelerate coming out, get underneath them. So we'll head to White House. Probably the best we could do there. All right, down to second gear, see a little bit of dust in front. No yellow flags though. want to make it under 30 minutes to go, certainly. Hopefully we'll be able to do that. Hopefully all the strategy paid off. I was expecting Ginther to be able to go another lap than he did. So we're a lot closer than we wanted it to be on fuel, but he said the damage was too much. Second gear here for the S's. Well, car gets a little sideways there. I just I 
I just nicked the barrier on the left rear. I want to push a bit, but I also need to make sure we make it the full stint length. top five now, but a win seems very unlikely at this stage. can only hope Ferrari runs into some troubles late, or that our strategy helps leapfrog the Fords in front. We've got the Chaparral up ahead. I feel like I've been close to him for the past few stints. No, we're not racing for position. 28 seconds off the car in front. Hold in a little bit. Do the last lap. Over the rise here. Get on the brakes. Right down the gears. First gear. the chaparral to get a bit of toe next time through the straightaway on the Mulsanne. Trying to pull him in here towards the end of the lap. Lift on the throttle there. Car sliding on the exit of Indianapolis. The Arnage just keep missing the apex there. It's so hard to get the car slowed down to such a slow speed for those corners. Fifty minutes to go. It's weird seeing the clock without hours remaining. that we only have to do one more stop. We really have to make sure we make it the stint. I have to hope nobody else makes two more from here. To fourth gear, I've got an Alpine exiting the pit lane. Doing 328s, it's good. It's near my best lap of the race. Even with the slides and things, I've got a Porsche in front. Slow us down a little bit through the S's, I think. Break there, just run a bit wide, compensate on the second S. Be a little too far off the chaparral, I think, to benefit. Gonna be quite deep in the braking zone here for Tetch Rouge. Locked up the brakes a lot, man. Don't need to be doing that. Got caught up looking at the chaparral, slid a bit wide. about a second there to the car in front. Just see him ahead still, but we're about the same distance as it was last lap. 30 gallons. Should be good on fuel. I'm just constantly worrying about it. As long as I can make it to a few minutes under 30, 26, 27 minutes to go, I think we'll be all right. Let's see where this puts us. Cliff, Ford GT in front, or the Jochen Rint. It's the Jochen Rint in this Ireland car. 
They've slipped back in class a bit. I think they're down in third in their class. Still running. Quite a few Fords running and are just not leading, which is so surprising. After the start of the race, it seemed like very much we're out front. is not too slow. It's actually quite quick through the twisty stuff. I'm trying to get by him before a series of corners ahead. Should be able to slip up the inside here. That's the 12. The Chaparral in front. Looks like they're trying to pass another car into White House. Fireworks. Looks like an Alpine. Still three or four Alpines running. Looks like the Chaparral is actually going to run into the pits. Just going to pass the Alpine here. A bit slower of a lap for me with that half spin. Five seconds off the car ahead. Down to second gear here for the S's. Nice and smooth and fast. You can see my skid marks from the lockup earlier. A bit more of the RPM now, but don't want to waste fuel. 44 minutes to go, 25 gallons. Feeling it's going to be very close. short stint that Ginther ran just has made it a lot closer than it was supposed to be on fuel. I think the strategy was fine, but he still almost had 10 gallons in the tank when he came in to fix the damage. Definitely could have done another lap. Getting through the kink here, past a couple cars on the straightaway there. 24 seconds, so we are gaining on the car in front. Five miles an hour to get through the corner. Trying to use all the track we can, slide the car a little bit on exit for the spectators. This is the time when everybody would be focused on the action, focused on the track, the final hour of the race. slow down and then jump on the accelerator to help get it to turn. Slide a little bit there through Indianapolis. Right, clear track ahead for the run through White House. 23 seconds now. 42 minutes to go. 21 gallons. save a bit here to try to make it four laps. Still going down to second gear for White House. It didn't work out well the time I tried to keep it in third. All right, somebody's in the pits. With 41 minutes to go as well. I think they're going to have to pit again. Again. 
was it the Ferrari? It looks like a couple of Ford GTs. Not sure exactly what it was. Might have been McLaren, who somehow we've fallen behind after being pretty far ahead early. Slide through Dunlop curve a bit. Got the turn in all wrong there, trying to look at times and things. Yeah, I need to save fuel so I make it four laps here. Hopefully I'm able to save enough to do that. This is the time where just think about the times we could have gone an extra lap. I have no idea. Even in the first stint of the race, if we went as far as we could have. It all adds up over the whole race. Right, 23 seconds off the car in front now in fourth. Short shift a little bit just to burn quite as much fuel at high RPM. Try not to lose too much time though. Very, very tight on fuel to make it as many laps as I, as I want to, as I need to. this Alpine at a strange time. Get up the throttle a bit early. Lose a whole bunch of time here, but I don't know any other way to get through there safely and not risk an accident. Still have Ken Miles' car off the circuit over there to the right. Down at first, a bit slow in the braking zone. Six thousand. Seventeen gallons. It's going to be really, really close. Keep saying it. The extra lap here would be huge, though. Especially if we get an extra lap at the end of the race. bit later on the downshifts there than usual 16.1 it's gonna be very very close to three more laps might just be able to make it though we'll keep up the same savings come across start finish area doesn't look like anybody's in the pits that we care about long list of cars there now still around 30 running maybe a little less than 30 at this point a strong field to complete the full 24. A bit wide on the first part of the S. Kind of close on the second. Empty track in front. We've had no traffic here for the last lap and a half. Right, there we go. Just as I said, a couple cars in front should be able to get them easy on the straight. Here, 14.4 gallons. Just under 37 minutes. If I can make it two more laps, that'll put us, especially with the pit stop time, under that 30 minute. I think we'll be able to make it from there. It's still going to be very close, though. 
it's not on track passes that keep us occupied, it's the fuel mileage and making it the distance. And through the kink. Downshift here, catching Matra. Seven. To fourth gear. He catch this mantra at an awkward time. We'll probably follow him through Indianapolis. Use it for some fuel saving. down to first gear to help get the car to turn. Through our nage. We're gonna be so slow here, I should have dove up the inside. Get him on the exit to the corner. I thought it was gonna fade to the right. Anyways, get around the Matra, right, 11.7. Should be able to make it two more laps. I'll be on fumes coming in, but help us get to the end of the race. I think we're still going to have to save in the final stint. I wish I could have just run to the finish, but that early pit stop just really lessened our opportunity. It's still, I think we made the right strategy call doing the partial stint earlier. If Ginther had gone the full way, it would have worked out perfectly to push here towards the end. 10.9, yeah, we're just going to make it two more laps. Still get a save just as much as I have been. Four minutes, so it'll get us well under the time, well, well under 30 minutes to go. Down to the S's here, down to second gear. At this point, the track would be so dirty, so much debris and rubber and dust and parts of cars and things everywhere. It'd be very much on a narrow, narrow racing line. Nine point eight gallons. We'd love to see over 5.5. Coming across the line next time just to know we can make it. track in front, we're 27 seconds off, kind of held the gap, haven't been able to pull in at all though. Just 20 seconds up on the car behind. It seems like everybody in front is probably on one more stop, so we'll see what we can eke out of this, but Hasn't been a perfect race. Couple incidents here and there. Especially while Ginther was driving, myself making a couple errors and not getting the strategy exactly right from the get-go, I think is what really has hurt us over this one. And still to finish is a big accomplishment here, and we'll just hope Gurney Whitmore are able to take the fight to Ferrari. You never know what can happen final stages of the race. So we've got 7.6 gallons, 32 minutes left on the clock. through Indianapolis there. It's out of first gear. Nice and smooth now. All right, so we'll come across the line coming up here with just about 30 minutes to go. We'll do another full lap, three and a half minute lap over pit stop, which is 
usually about a minute long, maybe a little bit longer. That should set us up well to get to the end. But not leading like I thought, although I think the car in front's in the pits now, so it'll be close for them to make it to the end from here. I could see some last lap dramatic, dramatic stuff. All right, come through White House. 5.8 gallons will be fine. One more lap. All right. It's good saving. I don't think I would have made it the extra lap if I didn't save. It's right on the line. 5.5, 5.4. We'll be able to coast from here if we run out. Come across the line, though. I see Whitmore and Graham Hill's car in the, in the pits. We're second place now. Where's Gurney? I don't know if Gurney's out front. I got a car 12, 14 seconds off. Those are the ones in the pits, all right. Just trying to get through this lap. No idea where Dan Gurney's car is. They were in second place as I took over the car, at least as we saw in the standings. But it's either Gurney in front or the Ferrari. It can't be both. One, one minute up the road is quite a lot. The Ferrari was a good amount ahead. Alpine here. It'll fade, maybe. Ugh. Without the Alpines, there wouldn't be nearly as much drama passing the slower cars. 29 under 30 minutes to go, then. It's been a long race to get here. We should be good when we pit. We'll come out. 26 minutes or so remaining. Should hopefully be able to get to the end, drama free. Certainly aren't going to be able to make up a minute. Whoever's in front. Go to the kink here. It's nice and easy. Probably less than 10 laps to go in the race overall. Second gear down to first. Two point four gallons should have just enough to make it to the finish line. Fourth gear then. Indianapolis. The car out front doesn't seem like they are pitting either. So they'll likely have one more stop, but so that puts us just going to be under a gallon of fuel left as we come to take the pit stop. Get through the S here. So just need to not run too deep in the box. Could be, could be up for a second place finish. I don't know how things will work out towards the end of the race. It's the Ferrari ahead, although we're pulling in a little bit here, but all right. So we'll make the pit stop, fill up with fuel, and then come out to finish the race. Try not to run too deep here. Down to first gear. Here's the crew. All right, so the crew just finished the tires on. Quite a long stop here. Try to get out, just miss our crew guy. The GT40 is pitting in front, so we saw Gurney go by right as I came in the pit lane. So he was the car behind me closing in. That means the Ferrari is likely still out in front, way out in front. Also saw Whitmore go by and Graham Hill. So that seems to be the top five right now. Got a mantra coming up behind, but should be able to pull away from him. All right, so final stint of the race. We've got 25 minutes to go. Keep our eye on it. I don't want to use excess fuel. I'm not going to be able to close, you know, likely two minutes to the leaders. So it's all about getting to the end here, making sure we don't run out of fuel and, and hope 
we can capitalize on mechanical failure or poor strategy decisions. I think we've done everything we need to to get to the end without too much drama from here. So just need smooth laps, no running wide, no making optimistic moves on traffic. I think some of the other GTs in front of me have to pit. I imagine the Ferrari still has to pit. I can only hope to have some sort of mechanical trouble. All right, fourth gear. So I'm still going to short shift a little bit. Should be fine on fuel, but you never know. Extra lap or right, up by the sprite there. I believe they're leading class. We'll take a look at the end of the race at all the classes and who won. Mainly focused on the upfront battle though, but such a surprise to see the Ferrari out front. I've said it quite a few times already. of them all sound might be down just a little bit on top speed from the start of the race I think tough to tell we had the slipstream quite a lot early on ton of first gear slide through Malsan corner to hit the sand be the worst bury the car in the sand with 23 minutes remaining seconds off the car in front though it's just not catchable in 23 minutes unless there's some major issues or of course they pit which I'll get them anyway could be short pit stops right at the end though if you're just doing a splash and dash like we did earlier in the race not uncommon to have splash and dash at the end of a 24-hour event in this time period mechanically in the 66 season in real life at Sebring Dan Gurney who had led the whole race the whole 12 hour race essentially had a failure on the final lap the final real straightaway and ended up losing the race you never know what could happen here Optimistic, but just push forward. Nice clean laps. Not a bad out lap there. Look like anybody's in the pits this time. We're just hoping to see some cars in the pits at some point. Other than the ones that are broken down. Across the line. second gear right against the inside wall for Tetrouge. Rouge past all the trees the very safe hay bales it's a great interview with David Hobbs talking about safe those were the idea of safety A clear track in front though just over 20 minutes remaining 35 gallons of fuel clean run to the end here. I am closing in on the car in front of it. 34 seconds now, which is quite a lot over the last lap. They had to have hit traffic, which means I'll likely run into that soon. I can see one Alpine up there. A little bit hot into Mall Sand Corner. Get it slowed down. 
opens all that extended pavement there to help maximize the speed. Hopefully get past this Alpine before Indianapolis. An awkward spot to catch them though, right? The second, the second kink, pass them on the left side, there we go. Close in a bit behind me through here, but we should have plenty of speed to stay ahead. Right down to Arnage. Slides out on that Alpine a bit. Thread the needle here. Still no cars jumping in the pit lane. minutes. Should be three more, four more laps. Should be plenty of fuel to do that. A couple cars in the pit lane looks like Alpines making their final stops. Right against the inside wall there. here Keep missing the apex on the first part of the S's it's easy though you're carrying a lot of speed down the hill and the Dunlop curve no chicane there to slow you down All right, third gear Alpine in front will pass him on the right minutes. Expect at least one of the cars in front to pit before the end. On lap 123. A minute lead on the car behind, so we really don't have to worry about anybody coming behind right now. Maybe except for that Ferrari. I think they'd have to pit too. Just gonna be a little too far up the road. They were a minute ahead when I pit. Top of the rise. Right to the edge of the track. It just got a little bit of dirt on the tires there, made it squirrely slowing down. We've got a Matra ahead. a little faster through here than previous laps. Down to first gear then. I'll try to just get on the throttle as soon as possible. This track, almost every corner leads onto a long straightaway. Tetrouge, Rouge, Balsan Corner, and Arnage. All important to just try to maximize the exit speed. So compromise your entry, get on the throttle as soon as possible. Second gear here. Follow the matcha through. He's not pulling into the pit lane. It looks like we do have a car in the pit lane, though. 
across the Matra there before the start finish straight anyway. And come by, who's gonna be in the pits? Looks like Dan Gurney's car. Oh. Right. I saw Bruce McLaren in as well, but he's a lap down. So we got ahead of Dan Gurney, which is I think he was in second position, so we could maybe be in second. Just have to run it, run it to the very end though. I think we're gonna be just fine on fuel. Nice and easy now, oh, but second would be so close. What could have been? Gurney's just 16 seconds behind me, I believe. So we got to keep an eye on that too. If we're not going to win the race, we do want to be the first Ford to beat my Formula One teammate. 14 minutes remaining, 25 gallons, so plenty of fuel to do four laps is the most we'd do from here. It's gonna depend on when the time runs out and where the leader is. Which dictates how many laps we have to do. 31 seconds off the car in front. So we're catching a Sprite, should be able to get him just before the kink. That tunnel vision with Hearts racing, just trying to maximize everything out of it. Just need to focus and keep it calm. I've done over four hours of driving at this point. Just continue doing what I'm doing. I see one car up in the road ahead, but still 30 seconds off, although that's holding quite a bit. there. It might still be the Sprite behind. Gurney's 16 seconds off. We'll get around the Sprite quickly. We'll come around. I think it'll be three more laps for us. Right to the edge of the track through Arnage. Yeah, it should be three more laps, but we've got fuel for four. It worked out. Getting that extra lap in the last stint was big. Shouldn't have to worry about it. But it would be close to do four laps. I think it would be possible. Line. I'm just looking to see if that car in front's gonna pit, but it doesn't look like they are. They've either figured it out and are stretching it to the end, or they're gonna have hit just a couple laps remaining, which is heartbreaking. Let's see, Get this mantra in front. Wouldn't put it past a couple cars needing a splash and dash on the final lap. Hopefully, he doesn't pit. He doesn't pass. Got a 3.65 in the pit lane. and smooth here through Dunlop Corner. So 30 seconds off the car in front. I've pulled out a few more seconds on Gurney behind, which is good. I was worried he was going to just be all out at the very end here. Ten of first gear. on the straightaway, getting close to the final 10 minutes. in front, pretty clear track, things have really, 
compared to the nighttime and the start of the race. It's much, much more calm out here. It's really everybody's just pacing to try to get to the finish. Uh, it's gonna be a Porsche in front based on speed. First gear here. Come to the end of the lap with less than nine minutes. So hopefully just a couple laps. We'll see how it plays out. I should have fuel for three. Front. We're going to catch him just going into Indianapolis. He's going to help break me a bit. He's going to be slightly quicker through here than me anyway. It's one of the long-tailed 906s. Down at first gear, he's quite slow through the slow corner. Fade over to the right, we'll get by him long before. All sequence of bends. Doesn't look like the car in front's pitting. But we'll see. Oh, it looks like they may be... All right, we're pulling in the time now, but it could be just a splash and go here in the final 10 minutes. Looks like the time might have stalled out. Maybe they're just passing somebody. I got excited there. I right, just focus on the road, get through White House here. Ugh. Still hope that we'll do it on the final lap. We've got 16 gallons, though, so we could just make it for three more laps. I think it'll just be two more, though. We'll have to see. Come past the pit lane. Nobody we want stopped in there. Looks like the six, the Andretti and Bianchi entry retired at some stage. Hadn't noticed that up till now. All right, 21 seconds ahead behind but still in fourth place it's just looking less and less likely like anything anything out of a Hollywood movie would happen Other circuits, the circuit's almost too simple to drive at some points. Other circuits are so more complex with how many corners and things and not having these long straightaways that you almost get out of practice driving this track on every lap. You just wait for over a minute here on the straightaway flat out. It's going to catch an alpine just before the kink. I'm just going to have to wait to get around him afterwards. It's a better judgment than full steam ahead there. Get the inside of him. Another one too before the Mulsan corner. It just allows you so much time to think and you're not really feeling what the car is doing. So it can be really hard to get in a rhythm here. He's going to help break me a bit coming into Mall Sand. Extend the brakes a bit onto the apex. There we go. Get around him. Gurney was able to pull in a little bit with my lift through the kink there. 12 gallons, 6 minutes to go. Should have enough fuel for two more laps. Still going to be right on the edge, though, if we have to do two more. It really depends on where the leader is, but they're far enough ahead. It may be two more laps. Uh, come through Indianapolis, second gear. until we get that checkered flag. But I kind of think it's 
probably going to be two more. Hopefully not more than that, because we aren't going to go more than that. Turn to second gear. We will make it two more laps, but not a lap more. the line. Doesn't look like anybody's pitting in front. We would cross the line just before the pit stall, so we can aim for the pits if we end up having to go more than just one more after this. Come down to the S's, two Alpines in front. It's a little loose on the entry there. Exit towards Tetra Rouge. Small string of cars in front, but no sign of the leaders. They're not pulling in the car in front. Three gallons, three minutes left in the race. There's one more lap left, so. Unless the leader's already gone by the line, which could have happened, but we were only a minute behind during the last sequence of pits. I can't imagine they're that much further ahead. They most certainly had to pit again. See. It's looking very likely like a Ferrari win, which is just so gutting. Such a strong Ford lineup leading on early. We've led laps. Our teammates have led laps. The Ferraris were so far down the order. Out of the top five, I think at some point all the Ferraris were. But it's not over until it's over and they were able to claw that all back, get back out front. The strategy may be just luck with slower traffic and incidents and things. Right, ton of second gear for Indianapolis, a bit fast there. Slide it through the corner. Got the Ford France Ferrari, Ford France GT40 in front, not Ferrari. It's the team I raced for at the Targa Florio, Guy Lichier driving for Le Mans here. Actually, end up following him through White House. Maybe sneak by before the S's here. Yeah, third gear on the inside. Just in time, sneak by him. Back to the outside. Big lift there just to settle the car in. Alright, we'll come through and hopefully coming to one more to go, although we won't really know. We have just enough fuel to make it one more lap, so if this isn't gonna be the final lap, then we're gonna have a big issue. plan to pit at the end of this lap and hope we cross the line coming into the pit stall. Got a few cars in the pits there. Oh, up to second. So the other four GT teams not working it out correctly and having to do a splash and go right at the end. Allowed us to catch them and pass them. We still got Gurney behind. And a minute up the road, I have to guess, is the Ferrari, but that means... This should be the final lap, I believe. So just as I thought, they were going to run out of fuel right towards the end of the race. That's what would have happened to us, too, had we not done the extra stint there in the middle. But a splash and go, basically, with one lap remaining, gets us back up to second position. Just watching that timer on the Ferrari. They're only a minute up the road, so they're still gonna 
time's gonna run out here. We're just at the end of the eight hours. Five, four, three, there we go, two, one. So the timer's up, so I believe this will be the final lap with four gallons remaining. We're just scooting by. We would have had two extra laps had Ginther made our strategy work, but it still was beneficial to pit when we did. Gurney was on a very similar strategy to us, but we're still going to beat him out by some 20 seconds. So we can get through the rest of this lap and we do get the checkered flag. We'll come up to the kink, just scoop by the inside. This 4 GT let off quite a lot there. Get us through the corner. We've got a little bit of traffic here. All right, we'll come over the top of the hill then. Heavy braking down a mall sand corner. And through there, which should be the final time. Gears. Following a 3.65 and they're likely to stay in front of us towards the end. Alright, down second gear for Indianapolis, just nice and easy through here. Don't need to push really. Down to first gear. There's the checkered flag waving. So we know it is the final lap and the leader has won. And I'm almost certain it's a Ferrari. We'll come through our Nage. All right. Get up the gears, just a few more corners to go. I'm so absolutely excited that we've made it to the end and finishing in front of all of our teammates, just based on strategy and, and some pace. It doesn't look like we've beaten the Ferraris. With this 365 in front. Just following through White House. No need to make any kind of dramatic maneuver on the final lap. Down to second gear. Gets a little loose there. Nice and easy through. We'll pass him on the exit and come to finish. We can see the SO man now. So completing the 24 hours of Le Mans, but not the finish that we wanted. Almost bittersweet to get to the finish. And there it is, the checkered flag. So coming to the line in a heartbreak, finishing the 24 hours of Le Mans and finishing in second position should feel triumphant. But we've lost the race for Ford against Ferrari with Ferrari's lone Ferrari 330p3 coming away the victors. Lorenzo Bandini and Jean Guichet crossed the line first to win just over a minute ahead of where we were, finishing second and heading up the string of Fords for the finishing order. Dan Gurney and Jerry Grant in the red Ford GT Mark II finish in third position to round out the podium. So two Fords on the podium, but both behind the top step with Bandini and Guichet taking away the honors. But then it was John Whitmore and Frank Gardner and Graham Hill and Brian Muir with the two final lead lap finishers and other four GTs for Allen Mann Racing. Looking further down the order, Joe Bonnier and Phil Hill were able to eke out a top 10 with the Chaparral running all the way to the finish and were fairly quick at the start starting up front and I think even leading a few laps ahead of the Ferraris in the early going. The Ferrari 365 for Bob Bondurant and Maston Gregory was able to also get a top 10. I believe that was the white elephant that we kept seeing. And then leading the way for the S2 class, also getting a top 10 with a Ford GT40, Peter Sutcliffe and Dieter Spuri. For the P2 class, Jean-Pierre Jassad and Henri Pescarolo were able to take the win in the Matra over the Porsche 906 from Udo Schutz and Peter de Klerk, still on the same lap battling with each other for the entire race. In the lower powered sports car class, both Austin Healey Sprites were able to finish side by side to take the win, Patty Hopkirk and Andrew Hedges finishing first in that class. And lastly, for the GTs, none were able to finish the race, with the Ferrari 275 of Biscaldi and Parm finishing furthest up, completing 80 laps before a suspension failure. So Ford has been defeated at Le Mans, but all is not lost. Taking a look at the points, because of the way the points are scored for Le Mans over the other races, we actually were able to come out on top, Ford scoring 9 points for our second place finish, to Ferrari's 12 points for the win but that makes it come out to 39 points in the lead for Ford over 38, just one point difference 
in the championship. It's an odd scoring system, but the rules are the rules. The top four race count, so we dropped our six points from the Spa second place finish, and Ferrari dropped one of their seven points finishes to equal out 39 points over 38. Ford wins the Manufacturer Championship for 1966, but has not yet won the greatest race of them all. So it was once again the battle of the century, Ford versus Ferrari, fuel mileage, mechanics, some incidents along the way, a race which brought almost everything but not a victory for Richie Axelson and the Ford team. So that just about wraps it up for the 1966 World Sports Car Championships. Still some rounds to go for the lesser categories and we'll see if Richie makes an appearance along the way. But back now to the Formula One World Championship and onwards to the French Grand Prix. So thank you for watching. This has been GP Laps, and I'll see you all again next time.